Madam, sir, the ship lies at anchor off New Eden. A tender stands at your disposal. Dreamed of clouds, great long fluffy bastards, low over the sea. I dreamed of the abyss in the darkest reaches of the deepest ocean. Good day to you, my love. And a good day to you, too. Are we in New England? <sighs> Welcome to America. Something's bothering you. Charles's letter. What of it? The ghost must be uncommonly dangerous, or he would banish it himself. Then we shall charge him double. <sighs> I'm serious. If the Reverend needs help, this can be no easy business. Red, you best be ready. I'll be careful, Master Duarte. Your apprentice stands ready to serve. Come on, Atea, we need to go. Night be. <laughs> Rory McWraith, gallant to the last. Life to the living, death to the dead. Consider our lovers, Antea and Red, the greatest banishers I ever knew. Life to the living, we say and death to the dead. It is not so simple. Since the dawn of humanity, the dead have lingered. Dead as alive, we are complex and emotional beings. Many entangled are the ties that bind. Since the beginning of memory, banishers have fought to sever those ties. Death is but a trifle. It comes to us all to haunt or be haunted. There lies the true horror. I, Charles Davenport, should know it. The haunting of New Eden scared me to death. I dearly wish I had not begged my friends to come and lift the curse. If this is June, I'd hate to see January. If I'd wanted to freeze my backside off in the summertime, I'd have stayed in Scotland. London wasn't much better. Look at it. It's cold as a bishop's arse, and twice as white. I don't mind saying it, I'm very disappointed. Charles wasn't lying. New Eden is cold as death. You may well be disappointed. You'd better be at the tavern. With a hot grog. Or two. I think I weary of long, boring sea voyages to grim, faraway lands. I can't remember the last time we did something else than work. 
After this, we should set sail somewhere warm and safe. The dead don't linger. No such place. But it's not a bad idea. I think we can get through here. Sure. Let's go traipsing through the rotten, falling down house. Looks steady enough. Keep going. I'll find a way to meet up with you. Over eager apprentices. Everything all right down there? Just a sneaky wanderer. You? Same, but I managed. Are these specters watching the road? Maybe, but are they keeping people outside town? Or are they keeping them in? how long these people are dead. The original settlers, perhaps. Whoever, this doesn't go well. <sighs> that all goes badly for the case. Situation's worse than you thought. Let's wait to hear what Charles has to say. Empty docks in a growing settlement. Never a good sign. By the time selectmen sit on their arses. Isn't that what selectmen do? When we get to town, we may need to split up to cover more ground. You may count on the most responsible student a banisher could have. We'll see if you remember some of your teaching. If you're up for it. Always. You're welcoming committee. Let's find the inn. Let's find Charles. It'll be good to see Charles and Esther again. <laughs> Would you a lecture on the sanctity of marriage? A pretty word for a set of shackles. I'm sure folk here are just as open-minded as Charles. You'll be the banishers then. Come too late. I'm sorry. But if poor Minister Davenport mentioned your names, I have forgotten them. Ante Duarte. This fellow here is Red McGraith. Of course. I'm Lisbeth O'Hara. The minister said you'd have questions. Well? Could you point us to the tavern? We're expected. The King's Arms. I'll not point it out to you as I disapprove of drinking. It's the large building next to the gallows. What are you doing out here? Most people seem to stay indoors. Since you ask, I came to town to buy a remedy for Mistress Fitcher. My sister has a sore leg. The salve eases her discomfort. We have a small farm some miles from here. And yes, the curse sits there too. You may have your time back, with my thanks. Well, thank the Lord for that. Charlie, we're here. Your prayers are answered. Poor as a drink. Finally. Banish it. Please, come in. As it is cold, your serving woman may sit while we talk. I'm the help. She's the boss. You're not Charles. My name is Antea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McGraith. Good day to you, sirs, madam. Now, where's Charles? Minister Davenport said help was on its way. I assume. Keep digging, Fairfax. Good day. Pennington, captain of the train band. This here is Thickskin Newsmith. We're the selectmen. 
<laughs> What's left of us? Why is Charles not here? We're sorry for your loss. We'll do what we can for his widow. The Reverend is dead. When? How? A terrible tragedy. Though our faith sustains us, we are still very much in shock. Our shock at Reverend Davenport's killing is so great that we must sit here in comfort, losing precious time. As governor of the colony of New Eden, it is my responsibility. Oh, look at us, sat here waiting to meet the same fate. We could all be miles away by now. You lot do what you want. I intend living. The esteemed select woman can be <coughs> brusque. Forgive her. And rest assured that her aptitudes far outweigh her manners. Or lack thereof. Her point still stands, Fairfax. Sitting here, doing nothing, we are as lambs to the slaughter. The banishers are here. Surely, with their expertise, we may yet prevail. Then I shall leave you in your expertise in ghosts and devils to find out. My expertise in blood and battle is of little use. Mistress Duarte, if I can be of service, you may visit me at home. On the other side of the street, as it were. Well, Governor, shall you leave or shall you stay? For myself, I'll stay. <clears throat> Our company has suffered terribly. But we are worth saving. And now that you are here, save it we shall. Please, accept my sincerest condolences for the loss of your friend. We feel the loss of our minister so very keenly. Charles Davenport was a man of great knowledge and devotion. The pride, indeed, of New Eden. It discommodes me greatly to remember how we found his body in the cemetery. Indeed, it distresses me yet further to tell you that we do not know what so tragically cost him his life. Could your physicians not save him? Would that we had a physician left, but it would have made no difference. Charles was dead when we found him, and we do not know how or why. One or two among our company have knowledge of the physic. Purples, they said, rupture, strangery, or sadness, guesses all. As a man of science in New Eden, I stand alone. You see, in my youth, I too was something of a demonologist. Rather a good one, if I say so myself. We're not demonologists, and neither was Charles. Is his widow Esther taking visitors? The widow Davenport is at home, and does not much venture out. Her house overlooks the dock. I offered Charles a home with a view across a pretty meadow, but he refused. He preferred the village life. Speak to her, if she'll see you. But she knows no more than we do about how her husband died. Why is town so empty? Of those who did not die, we are the few who stayed. Though our motivations may differ, all who remain have shown extraordinary faith and courage in the face of our adversity. Will they return when the curse is lifted? I fervently hope so. They have homes here. But we sent the children away some time ago, and many could not live with their absence. If we do not resolve this situation quickly, the community of New Eden shall be broken. Perhaps forever. Those who left, where did they go? Boston, outlying settlements. Anywhere, everywhere. Although, as you may have heard, the weather has likely closed the roads. Some believe the pass through the dark woods offers salvation. I do not. I believe we must stand our ground.
What can you tell me about the curse? I can tell you that it has been our misery for many long months now. And I can tell you that it worsens by the increment. First, there was pestilence and disease. Then came the nightmares. Then came madness. In the end came death. And death remains. But in all honesty, <laughs> I think the weather is the worst part. This never-ending winter hangs heavy on us all. Worse yet, it traps us here. What did Charles know about it? What had he learned? Tragically, I had not yet had the opportunity to discuss his investigation. And his passing now excludes the possibility. Our late friend Charles faced a Herculean task and acquitted himself with honor. You will have to do far better than that, I'm afraid. Our contract stands. If you'll have it, yes. Our contract stands. For Charles. All right. For Charles. You're a demonologist, you say? I am that. Like my father was before me. Faith and science are our twin compasses, you see, to a deeper understanding of the secrets of God's green and pleasant land, and those who threaten it. And what have your compasses told you about the curse? They have told me... They have told me that Reverend Davenport was better placed than I to solve our problem. Which is why you're here. We agreed it. I shall stand for the company, I said as the moral authority, the anchor, and the rock, as Charles and his banishers lift the curse. Heroic work all round. Indeed it is, madam. Indeed it is. But we do it all the same, because we must. Aye, because we must. Thank you. We have what we need. Then I wish you success. By my instruction, a room is prepared for you in the old schoolhouse. I'll be here if you need me. Damn it, Charles. Those accursed sea storms. If only we'd been here earlier. No, no. But as Charles would say, Another day, another soul to save. These people are idiots if they believe prayer will save them. slept for fear you would not come. I'm at a loss. Would God even allow me to drag you into these... these dark times? Esther, you're not alone now. We're here. I'm so sorry we didn't get here on time. Truly. I know. Charles kept saying it. Have faith. They will come. If only he had kept his faith himself. What happened to him? Poor Charles. Just one more victim of the curse of New Eden. You know how he is. Was. Restless. Impatient. It's not that he gave up on you, his friends. But that he could wait no more. I believe he tried to lift the curse. I too have questions, but I have no answers. 
nor do I now have a husband. What can you tell me about the esteemed Governor Haskell? Fairfax Haskell is well-read and educated, but at times his back can be too stiff. He shares Charles's interest in the unknown, but his passion seems less than practical. He is an academic. Still, good to know our patron has some understanding of our work. We met the captain, too, along with the huntress, Thickskin. Do you know them? I find Thickskin Newsmith's manner a little frightening, but I think she has a good heart. A fine hunter, by all accounts. Captain Pennington comes with a reputation for soldiering. He comports himself with a wry dignity, but I suspect that beneath it all, he's just... sad. Charles thought so too. There are wounds beneath Saul Pennington's armor, he said, that time and God have not yet healed. How were things, you know, before all this? Before the curse? It was a busy and exciting time. Charles immersed himself in the community here. He had a hand in everything. The people came to rely on him. I'm sure they look to someone else now, but I can't imagine it's the same. Is there anything we should know about? Lord, deliver me, for I cannot endure this. I cannot endure it, and Charles does not deserve it. Anything at all, Esther. Please. I have felt Charles present about the house. His ghost lingers. He needs help. If he's here, I promise I will know no rest until he has his. You can count on us. We'll start with the house. Charles's papers are gathered in his office. Take what you need. Thank you, Esther. We'll take a look around, if that's all right. May I be of any help? Mm, you stay put. We'll find the way. Where are you staying, my dears? The governor had a room prepared for us in the schoolhouse. The schoolhouse? Wouldn't you rather stay here? You'd be more comfortable. It's very kind, but a long day ahead of us. I don't want to bother you. I don't have much. But promise me you'll come for dinner tomorrow. For all time. Of course. Purcell, could you find nothing better? These days I lack the heart to play. I can't believe you brought your piano forte to New England. It cost a fortune. But you cannot part a pianist from their beloved keys. Have you received other visitors? Most dare not leave their homes. Although Mr. Bachelor came to see me. That was nice of him. These notes are erratic ramblings. Charles was worried about the curse plaguing the settler's dreams. How malicious is this curse tormenting people in their beds? I can still picture him crafting your very first Bane Ring. You sound much more fond of the moment now than you were back then. Bit green for an actual haunting, you said. <laughs> you were. Still, you did all right. Remember when he started to wear these to look wiser and older? <laughs> he was hiding his hair loss. Faith always was his beacon in the darkness. 
Something must have really triggered him if he lost his edge. Got enough books, Charles. See, the piano's not the only thing you paid a pretty penny to ship. Esther couldn't attend Charles's burial. Poor woman. That's terrible for her. Esther never got to say farewell to Charles. I could have made him manifest. Now that we know why he might be back, we should go investigate the cemetery where he was found. Are you leaving already? We need to investigate the cemetery. What will you do for my Charles? If he's present, we'll find him. Then we'll ask him what he wants us to do. Must I see him too? First, let's find out what happened. After that, we'll see. Best get started. Time may be against us. You'll be all right. I doubt it, but I'll do my work all the same. We came here to help Charles and help Charles with Shell. Ask around, see what people will tell you. I'll go to the cemetery and do the same. Be careful. Hi, you too. A wisp? So close to town. Where are you leading me? Most of these people died fighting. Someone didn't want them here. memory lingers here. I might be able to reveal it. Mixing pyrite with those plants I found should work. In each stain hides a story. In the name of the Lord, I command you. Be gone from this place! You do not command me, clergyman. Who are you, ghost? Unveil yourself! Well, since you ask so politely... Who are you? I am everything you've ever feared! Be gone! You have no shell! No ties! No purpose! No. But neither do you. Don't 
damn it. That thing he faced, what was it? The tie that binds his ghost. With it, I can make him manifest. If I can find his grave. Ah. Huh. Here you are. Now is a good time for we old friends to talk. I'm too far, Red and I, not to see you one last time. Your pupil has become the master. If we fight, I'll beat you. Come on, Charles. Join me now. I know you're here. I know you're here. You know me, Ghost. I only wish to talk. Esther worries. And here, at last. Oh, poor Esther. I'm so sorry, my friend. So sorry for us all. What happened? What's going on here? Sad to say, dear friend. I made a mistake. And it cost me my life. Is Red with you? There is no time to waste. Why did you not wait for our help? The threat was rising. Despair growing. There were so many dead, Antea. So much sickened flesh. So many afflicted souls. There was no more time. Do you know how this curse began? What prompted it, I do not know. Nor do I know when. Many months ago, certainly. But I do know this. This nightmare chose New Eden for a reason. So, a ghost. This one is different. Implacable. Very clever. Many magnitudes more ferocious than a spectre, and just as relentless. Before you died, you investigated the curse. What did you learn? That our enemy is deceptive and merciless. That we should not underestimate its power. We? I am dead, dearest Dante. But I am a banisher yet. I may still teach you. If I allow you, which I do not. And here, do not repeat my mistakes. If a nightmare curses New Eden, you need all the help you can get. Its presence felt strongest in the meeting house. Perhaps the light of God there forced it to fight its ground. I had the building closed. The worst of the malevolence is contained. But it won't stay locked up for long. We'll banish it, Red and I. Our good friend's death shall not go unpunished. Be warned. This nightmare is too angry to be persuaded. And too powerful to be destroyed. Your death pains us greatly. Your return pains me too. I know. For my part, I'm glad to have seen you one last time. To have had the chance to warn you. A 
I thought nightmares were a myth. A nightmare is the rarest of ghosts. A powerful, insidious spirit, birthed by tragedy most dreadful. How do I banish it? There is meager wisdom in the texts. What little there is says it cannot be banished at all. If it's a ghost, I can banish it. You took notes, I suppose? Where might I find them? They... vanished. <laughs> in the days before my death, perhaps I mislaid them. Which is not like me. If you find them, read them carefully. Perhaps I missed something. Something important. How did this nightmare kill you? I believed that I could come to the cemetery and make it manifest. To my initial delight, it worked. I now suspect it came by choice. It seemed amused. As if it were a pleasant game to weigh my measure as a man. How does its malevolence manifest? It poisons minds and sickens bodies. It draws spectres to it and sours the weather. It delivers nightmares to one's sleep. For a time, screams tore through the night as folk awoke in terror. When it appeared to me, I did not see its true face. But I heard a woman. She was... Love. I felt her gaze. My heart froze. I died. The spirit is vengeance pure. The ghost of one who was terribly wronged. I've heard your warning. You can go. No. I must remain. Esther needs my protection. My flock needs me too. You know how this works. You know I won't allow that. I am still myself, Antea. With time, I'll grow stronger. I can help you. The longer you haunt Esther, the hungrier you'll be. You know this. This is different. I'm the Reverend Charles Davenport, your friend and mentor. You know me. You know I am a good man. I knew you. You were a good man. Now you are a ghost. And I cannot let that stand. But I swear it, the nightmare will end, and Red and I shall do the ending. Charles Davenport was a good man, and a fine mentor. And you a fine student, though you took a hard line. I never could unpick that from your character. Has life tempered you since? Life has tempered my steel. Death and the manner of it has made you the very thing you once opposed. Goodbye, Charles. Peace on your soul. Remembrance on your... Antea, wait! Wait for what? We're banishers. Death to the dead. Let Esther choose for herself. Oh Lord, please don't ask me to do that. Esther, my good wife, and the very best. I miss you so. Oh dear Lord, Charles, why are you here? Why have you come back? You must leave, please. I must stay. I must protect you. The thing in the meeting house feeds on our torment. I should have known better. I know better now. Antea, give Charlie the ascent he deserves. Charles Davenport, you have no reason to stay. Go. Let Esther grieve in peace. Save her, my friends, and save yourselves, save them all.
I'll walk Esther home. <laughs> I'll do it. The women can talk. Uh, then all the way to the schoolhouse and make the bed. Charles is at rest now. And Taya, she gave him the care he needed. My Charles, where do you think he is now? He's... Uh, I don't know. I miss the warmth of his hands. His calm presence in our house. If I close my eyes, I can picture him. He's in a place where sunlight chases the snow away. It is warm and there is fresh milk. The sheets are cleaned and pressed and folded. Nothing can ever be the matter. You're right. He's at peace. And you deserve to rest. I'm sorry. I'll miss him. Dearly, tomorrow, we'll continue investigating the curse. Good night, Esther. I am glad you are here. Both of you. We need you. You should get some sleep. You'll need it. We did the right thing. Charles was our friend. I love you, Red McCraith. But? But when it comes to ghosts, your heart makes you reckless. It's dangerous. Were you really about to banish Charles? Charles would have done the same for your ghost or mine. I hope he'd have at least hesitated. Charles was a good man, full of love. Banishing his ghost wouldn't have been easy, but it would have been right. Ghosts only bring misery, Red. Make no mistake, they steal life's essence from the living. Aye. They don't always do it out of malice. Give them that. The dead have no business with the living. Letting go is hard. Even for the dead. Dies bind fast. And we are paid to cut the knot. Would you banish me? If it came to... You'll not escape me so easy. You I would bring back from the dead. <laughs> That's not funny. I'd fill you with fresh essence. I'd give you so much essence you'd return bloated with life. Steal essence from the living to feed my ghost, you would me. I would, then I'd kill you again for dying before I do. Sometimes you scare me. I know. I think Charles was right. This thing in the meeting house could be, a, what did he call it, a nightmare? I really hope not. Such entities are legendary ghosts, even for banishers. We'll see tomorrow. Now, to sleep. This was a dreadful day. Oh. 
Poor Charles. Poor Esther. Firebane. She says I'm the reckless one. Where are you? You're hardly in the meeting now, sorry. You see, we never stood a chance. Antea, are you hot? Where are you? <laughs> I'm here, my love. What happened? I'm here, my love. How mundane. Show yourself. God came to the man in a dream and said, Behold, thou art dead. But the man had done nothing wrong and said, Lord, wilt thou also slay the righteous? What? Will you slay the righteous? Be not alarmed. I bring you aid. There is no aid. There is only dereliction. Where is Antea? What have you done with her? <laughs> Hell's pulse. Lady, if you hurt her... You cling to love, a fool to the last. There is no love. There is only defilement.
Sansia. If you laid a finger on her... You know what? Come to her aid? Oh. There is no aid. There is oh. only... Oh. Oh. Retribution. Give him back. How touching. You come to claim your man. You think you love him. You do not. There, in the dark of your marrow, there is no love. Only betrayal. I offer you a trade. He stays and you leave with your life. I'll bargain with no ghost. You have a brain, yet you think with your idiot heart. You're weak. to her aid now when all is lost. If you do, I'll be waiting. The icy ocean made a diamond from his grief, then buried it in his heart. The weight of his failure dragged him down. Outside time, drowning in the gloom, he spoke her name. Take me instead, he screamed, soundless, to the cold and silent waters. Out beyond the black veil of death, something heard his cries and reached for him. Let her go. Take me instead. Let her go! You're awake. Who are you? She who rescued you. Tended you for days on end. Weeks, maybe. Weeks? Oh, God. What have I done? Get your strength back before you beat yourself up. She's dead. Yes. That's why you're here. And why I was sent to look after you. I feel like we've met, but I'm sure we have not. I feel like I know you forever, but do I? You're confused. It's normal. You've been near killed by a nightmare, you've lost your beloved, and now you've a witch by your sickbed. Witch? Witch. I go by Seeker. Find the Banisher, said my mistress. Tend him, and answer any questions he asks you before you leave him be. So, how do you feel? Does it matter? Of course it matters. It means you're alive, and you haven't given up. Who 
who sent you? Her name is Ceridian, and my hands and words are hers. Beyond that, don't burden yourself. You should have let me die. What are you, a child? Are they teaching self-pity in Banisher School now? This nightmare, how it spoke, how it tore right through. I've never seen the like of it. Few have. Fewer have lived to tell of it. What drew such a powerful spirit here? Who knows? Something awful, I don't doubt. The worst angers rise from the most terrible wrongs. The friend said that. He's trying to warn us. An immutable law. You have wise friends. What am I to do now? How do I... How do I do it alone? You're not alone. Have faith. If Ceridian had told me more, I'd tell you it. But you must have faith. <laughs> have faith. You say that you do not know me. Easy said. Harder done. What comes easy in life tends not to matter. It's the hard stuff that counts. You have a hole in you. A yawning. Grimacing pit in your soul. That's love, that is. The hole won't fill because the love won't die. God, what have I done? Here's the thing. Unlike most, you get a second chance. I suggest you seize it. Why'd you pull me from the water? What's your business with me? I have no business with you. But my mistress does. Ceridian says the wall between the living and the dead is under threat. You, it seems, have a part to play. This is mine. You've lost me. No, I found you. But so did your grief. And it demands to be felt. You may think you're done with your ghosts, Red McCraith. But they aren't done with you. I'll go now. Rest. Why ever my mistress saved you, she has good reasons. The best. Where are you going? Oh, to Ceridian. She needs me. Where shall I find you if or when I need to? Maya marshes. Great big swamps other side of the woods. You can't miss them. We'll know when you're coming. Until we meet again then. That's right, Banisher. Now. Turn around. What? I'm leaving. Yeah. 
This isn't happening. This can't be happening. Antea! Call me to you! I'm sorry. I'm so sorry! Spectres. Here. Matea, are you there? Right here. My love, right here. It's you. You. you have me. Oh. No, don't go. I'm here. Follow me. Do not be troubled. How could I not be? To have lost you and found you like this. And you're hungry. That's one way to say it. Yes. What can I do? Charles's Bible, the tie that bound his ghost. Some essence remains upon it. For now, it will do me. you're here. I'm glad you're back. Truly. The living should not truck with the dead. I've known that since childhood. I learned the hard way. You never told me this. What happened? It was a lifetime ago. For now, it doesn't matter. He's still hungry. I'm hollow. As if I were filled with emptiness. So the essence Charles left on his Bible was useless. Consuming his tie did make me feel better. But I'll need more. Much more. 
We should talk about what happened. After the meeting house, I mean. After the nightmare killed you, she held me a moment longer. She mocked me. And she let me fall. I waited for the rocks to claim me, but instead I hit the sea. Part of me wished to embrace it. I think I felt you at this point. I remember the despair in your voice. I called to you for a long time. I struggled in the waves till the tide brought me ashore. I woke up in a cave. I'd been rescued by a young woman named Seeker. A witch's apprentice. She was proud to tell me that. Her mistress had sent her to take care of me. Witches rarely show themselves. Intriguing that one would help us. I think we should go back to New Eden Town. I agree. To free me, I believe we must reclaim my body. I refuse to be this way. I'll not abide it. I'm so sorry, my love. How can I help? I'm a ghost. You're a banisher. I'll not banish you. I cannot and tear. So you die. You can't ask that of me. If that's what I wanted, you'd have no choice. But you don't wish it, do you? Not before I've had my revenge. Not before I've seen the nightmare defeated by you and me both. In the schoolhouse, he joked about bringing me back to life. Is that possible? Yes. The ritual of lesser palingenesis. It's extremely difficult. Highly dangerous. I could try, right? You'd teach me and I'd bring you back. Red, it's an ancient ritual. It requires power. It consumes essence in large quantities. We're talking about human sacrifice. Murder. Just maybe. We could consider it. I mean, if there's the slightest chance I could bring you back, I'd take it. It's a dark ritual, Red. It's tempting, and that's dangerous. To think of being back in your arms. I'm tempted to. Could I give you your assent? That would be the simplest solution, but not the easiest. Why? My body is my tie, and the nightmare still holds it. In the meeting house, but before she let me fall, I swear she dared me to come back. She's as devious as she is powerful. She won't just hand it over. Then what shall we do? If we are to return to New Eden Town, we must first learn more about our enemy. Charles said nightmares don't appear without good reason. Yes. We have a mystery to solve. Witches to meet. People to find and questions to ask. And then you'll help me go. One way or another. I will. I swear it, Mother. Rest. You need it. I'll stay close. On to New Eden, whichever way it lies. We'll need provisions, going for the basics. We'll manage, together. Well, if you're gonna play with salt circles, you better get them right, lad. Thank you. 
I've seen no bodies. Maybe the wolves took him. Can you not see the symbols on the wall? No. Take my hand. I want to try something. Oh. Is that possible through our bane rings? They allow us to connect the invisible and the incarnate. Through this bond, what I see I bestow on you. Are those webs made of spectral stains? Let me. All these years, the things we must have missed. The dead hide more from the living than we thought. This is going to be helpful. Watch out! Spectre possession! <laughs> crawling with spectres. It's not just New Eden Town. What happened here for the veil to be so thin? War, invasion, or colonization of a land that's vulnerable to haunting. I like a bit of rabbit, but these are off. That'll be why the wolves haven't eaten them. Hunting gear. Perhaps our trappers are nearby. You took yourself up there very fast. That might take some getting used to, for both of us. Antea, will people be able to tell I'm haunted? Perhaps, if they had talent or training. What if someone sees you? Unlikely. If they had talent or training, they wouldn't have needed us banishers. These witches you mentioned must know something about the nightmare. Ah, uh, but can we trust them? Uh, witches only involve themselves with people if they absolutely have to. Yours must have good reason. I think I see a crossing. Over there. Signs of civilization. Lucky me. Bad news. The bridge is out. And we'll find another road to New Eden. Strange. I see stains, but not the usual kind. I have strong ankles, but at this height, I'm not gonna make it. There's a pattern to them. Don't you see it? It calls to me. Well, and up and down we go. Those stains. I could have grasped at them had I been stronger. It's hard to think clearly. The hunger is back and it's growing fast. Already? Right, let's find something to sustain you. You're back! Beg pardon. Thought you were someone else. You hungry, friend? The stew is thin enough, but I'd be glad to share. Kind of you to offer, lad, but no, thank you. Been a while since I've seen another human's face. You come from camp? You a uh, hunter? Of sorts. Red McCraith. I'm a banisher. Liking the stories. Jacob Lind. I'm a trapper. <laughs> That's a real job. What are you doing here? How'd you know we're safer? The woods are kind to them as knows them. We hunt here. When we get pelts and meat, we trade in New Eden. 
but game's been scarce. We've not to trade, so we wait. When even the wolves are starving, you know it's going to be a bad winter. Winter? This is June. Is it? Could have sworn it was. I'm sorry. On my own, I lose track of time. And with your friend? Oh. You met Ben, did you? He was just here, he was. Just here. You're exhausted. Unsurprising, given how tainted are these woods. Are you sleeping? I don't like sleeping. I see things. Bright eyes in the leaves. What does tainted mean? Marked by ghosts. Haunted. Tell me of your nightmares. One nightmare. Always the same one. Ben has it too. Would you care to share them? No! No! It is a nightmare. Nothing more. Who's Ben? Another trapper? Hi, the best of them. Taught me all I know. He's out now, but he'll be back. Where has he gone? The bridge is down. As down as down can be. Can't cross. Bad things lurk in the shadows. They sent flesh. Game's low. Game's low and Ben's gone. He'll find game, he will. I know it. What lurks in the shadows? Is that what keeps you here? That... and the fog. Can't hunt if you can't see. Ben shoots better than me. Knows the woods better too. I'd only slow him. Only slow him. Where did you meet Ben? We found each other. Brothers in spirit, he said. He's been good to me. Too good. Why? He's important to you. I? And me to him. He's lost his nerve. Or a ghost has taken it from him. Get some rest, Jacob. You need it. If you see Ben, tell him I'm thinking of him. Tall lad, even when he's lying down. Can't miss him. Poor child. He's shrouded in spectral stains. Jacob. Ben sleeps here. I don't sleep. There are maggots in the bed. Your meat's turning, friend. Food is scarce. We might do. Whatever haunts the boy spawns maggots. We should talk to this Ben fellow. Are these Ben's things? Most of them. Not the rope. You can have it if you want. Kind of you. Thank you. Ben went out without a gun. We're trappers, not hunters. We had the gun for safety, but it got damp. Done work. He's so confused, I doubt he knows what year it is. What happened to him? Maybe his mate abandoned him. Quick mist. Spun by a ghost after a violent death. Anisha rule number eight. Don't get lost in quick mist, lest the spectres get you. 
wise, but I see no other way. Either Ben was lost in the mist, or he's the source of it. You might be able to drop down from here. Love a drop into the deep unknown. Can't see further than the end of my arm down there. Don't worry, it'll affect your other senses too. Oh, this quick mist is thicker than a Scots dragoon. It smells almost as bad. And traces of a struggle. An echo hangs on it. Drop may hide the rain. I can't. I can't do it no more. On your feet, Lind. We don't give I've, up. I've had enough. There's no way up. There's no way down. For days we've eaten nothing but boiled shoe leather. I'm done. We don't give up. <laughs> Leave me be. God be damned. I'm sick of carrying you. What are you doing? Don't hurt me. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you! Ah! Ben died in the fall. And now his maggoty ghost is back to haunt the friend who pushed him. So was Jacob lying to hide the murder? He wouldn't be the first. We need to find the body, if the wolves haven't gotten there first. Shite on a short stick. Bloody hell. The lad's been torn to pieces. No, wait. He's been carved with a knife. For his meat. Still no tie. A Jacob's hovel, perhaps? Jacob was eating meat. Jacob was eating Ben. Poor, desperate, starving boys. Sometimes you must do what it takes to survive. I think I found our tie. How did I not notice it before? There were so many spectral stains, it's a wonder we found it at all. Come on, let's talk to Ben. the ghost to reveal itself, the right ritual. You're not Jacob. Who's you? My name is Red McCraith. The Scot. You? Antea Duarte. We're banishers. We can help you. <laughs> I'm beyond help. Where's Jacob? How long have you and Jacob been out here in the woods? 
Some winters now, but this one, it never ends. No way out, no way in. We were alone, not an animal in sight. No, oh, when things changed, we got stuck. <laughs> These godforsaken woods. You tried many times to leave this place. I tried and failed. Week on week, month on month, maybe. We went in circles. The woods are tricky, sir. Treacherous. Mean. Round and round we went. Round and round and back again. Jacob said you both had nightmares. The same nightmare. Aye. And yet we got no sleep. Couldn't tell truth from fantasy. The shadows seemed to flicker at the corners of our eyes. We know what befell you, Benedict. What keeps you here? He does. He waits and waits and waits on me. He'll not face what he has done, and I cannot go. I cannot go. But I'll not hate him. How could I? We thought he'd acted willfully, planned it. Tell the truth. We thought him a liar. No. Jacob is a kind and godly man. Pure and true, always. He's the very best of us. And yet, though I denied it, I saw it coming. I became wary. Some part of me knew what he was thinking, because I was thinking it too. What do you want from Jacob? Do you seek revenge? I seek no vengeance. He is I, and I am him. What does he need that he may let go? He needs to face the truth. To accept what he has done to both of us. At night, he'd read scripture. God would mind us if we were good and honest. Jacob taught me that. We were good. We lived honest lives. We kept to ourselves, minded our business, and no one else's. So tell me, Banisher, what did we do to deserve this? I'm sorry. Despair can drive a good man to a bad place. God only visits hardship upon us because he knows we can bear it. Thank you, Benedict. Perhaps we'll talk again. Perhaps we shall, Banisher. Perhaps we shall. Jacob must confess. I fear the truth will break him. Oh, there's the Jacob. Mr. McCraith, sir? I'm sorry, Jacob, we must talk. Something has happened to Benedict. What? Where is he? What happened? Come on now, Jacob. If something's happened to Ben, say so. Where is he? Day after day, you woke hungry from your nightmares. You tried to escape and failed many times until you broke. You killed your friend, Jacob. What? No. No, that's not what happened. Leave me be. Aye. That's what you said to Benedict before you pushed him off the cliff. But that's not all, is it? You killed Benedict, then you ate him. You were starving to death, yes, but you made your choice. You're not real. You're not real. You're a monster.
Benedict lingers. End his suffering. Face the truth. I failed him. I failed Benedict. I was so angry, so angry. He kept pushing me. We kept, we argued, and I couldn't think. When I saw him lying there on the ground, lifeless, the whisper said, it was him or me, him or me. I would have died. I should have died. For my sins, I deserve no better. I fail God. I failed my friend. I'm a monster. I deserve no mercy. No. You're just a sinner, begging for help. We both faced a choice, simple and awful, to kill or to die. You struck first and here we are. Do you forgive me? Our fates are in the hands of others now. Yes. Banisher, do your job. If you're to come back, if we're to use the ritual we spoke of, this is when it starts. Red. If we take one step along that path... Jacob is ready to die. The others won't be. We'll tell lies. We'll harvest the essence of the living. I'll shoulder the blame. As the man says, we face a choice, simple and awful. Do we kill? To be together again? Or do we part forever? We must decide now. Benedict Stoughton, in the face of life's inexplicable hardships, at times to stay alive we must do terrible things. In his despair, your best friend stole your life. Then he compounded his sin. He fed on your flesh. Confessing his sins, he offered to forfeit his life. He has told the truth. You may go in peace. We were trapped. The snare was set to kill us slow. Jacob, my friend, my only friend. I forgive all. I forgive everything. It's over, Jacob. Ben's gone for good. Ben's been gone a long time. I know that now. I need to give him his last rite. Please. 
I need to be alone. It's over. The tie will sustain me a little longer. Jacob, would you mind if I rest inside a while? Suit yourself. No more maggots. Ben is gone for good. When I was a soldier, I heard many stories of those besieged eating their own. Some were true. Famine is a ferocious master. Jacob was hungry. Yeah, just like you. Just like me. How do you feel? I feel trapped. Locked into an embrace with a nightmare. I crave. I crave essence. With it, I'd not so fast decay. With it, I'd not so quickly become one of those stupid, bloody specters. We made the right choice. And we made it together. Taking a life is no small matter. When I ascend, we'll be separated. For the rest of your life. Maybe for the rest of eternity. Never again shall we stand side by side. This we, this thing we have, shall cease to be. Right. That's that settled. Thank you. I hope you've no regrets. Soon I'll reclaim my life. We will pay the highest of prices. We banishers may call it blaming, but our hearts will know we're taking lives. How many? I don't know. Perhaps too many to ask of you. I want us back, Red. I want revenge on what killed me. I want to live. I want it too. With the whole of my heart. No price too high. I will do it. By my oath, I swear it, my love. I'll see you back from the dead. Let's go back to the bridge. I feel stronger. Let's see if I was right about those spectral stains. That's it. I think I can jump the gap. Your bane rings will help. Can you find the place where the stains align? jump was quite something. Ghosts are quite something. But I feel clumsy. I have no idea what I'm doing. You'll master it. You've mastered everything else. Thank <laughs> you. 
Better right side up. What happened? Rope trap. Jacob Lind mentioned the hunter's camp. It may be close. Something's there. Something alive. Yes. Who are you, and where did you spring from? I've come from New Eden Town. That's a very long way from here, sir. Who are you? My name is Red McCraith. I work for the selectmen of New Eden Town. I'm a banisher. Didn't you and the other one die in the meeting house? I fell in the water. And the tide took me. I survived. Up to now, anyway. I've never seen a banisher before. I expected more. Could I please continue this conversation with my feet on the ground? Easy now. Stop your jiggling. Hold still, I said. You try holding still when some lassie's shooting at you. In that case, banish her. You may escape the trap yourself. Wait, what? No, no, come on! Our camp lies downhill. I'll wait for you there. Come back here. Shit! I don't suppose you can help me, can you? That was entertaining. Good to see you smile. Wait. Something's there. Something alive. No. A bone. This must be the camp the rope lady talked about. Doesn't look like much from here. Who was she anyway? Some species of huntress. She took no liking to you. Hard times like these, fewer folk will help a stranger. Come up. I wish a word with you. So, you found us safely, Red McWraith. Aye. Well, thanks to you. I had to know you could look out for yourself. You're welcome to stay until you're told to leave. I'm Kate Newsmith. Far as you're concerned, I'm in charge round here. Why might you tell me to leave? He who don't pitch in pitches out. We'll not go hungry to feed him that don't contribute. Hungry? Child, you have no idea. Newsmith. Anything to thick skin? Aye. We're sisters. 
Me and Antea, we met her in town when we first landed. Thick skin will return from the hunt soon enough. Sorry for your loss, by the by. How fares New Eden town? I'm heading back that way. You're mad. There's no going back. There's not to go back to. We may be all that's left. New Eden town now is naught but sorrow, pestilence and death. Some of our band were homesick. We heard them screaming in the woods. They didn't come back. Something wicked prowls. Folk dream of a murderous beast that'll kill them if they dare to leave camp. There was a second group. They never arrived. Some think the beast got them. Like I say, we may be all that's left. Guilt. Dread. She puts a brave face on it, but the truth is in her eyes. All right, I'll stay a while. I have certain skills, if they may be of use. Our hearts are low. Nightmares plague our sleep. Do what needs doing, help who needs helping. Well, give me some names. Prudence Hick. A widow, like so many. She cooks. Lately she's cooked shite. He who puts the food aright is a hero indeed. I'll make the rounds. I'll pay my respects to Widow Hake and see what's the bar. If you can't find Prudence, ask Jane. They're close. Also, please check on our blacksmith. His already meagre skills have lately declined. Talk to Jane, talk to Prudence, check the forge. Talk to anyone who needs help, which is probably everyone. Right, got it? One empty cabin remains. A tree fell on it, but you may have what's left. Welcome to the Dark Woods. Can I ask you, what do you know about the nightmare? I have bad dreams, aye. The worst kind. We all do. A nightmare is what we banishers call the creature in the meeting house. It's a breed of ghost. A bad one. Aren't they all? Town was doomed. My sister knew it. After... Well, after your mishap, it was time for us to go. Your bad dreams. Care to share? Might be the hunger. Might be the fear. But we all seem to dream the same dream. A beast. A wolf, but not a wolf. Larger, stranger. It howls and hunts from the shadows. Intriguing indeed. But still, just a dream. Is it? Thick skin apart. Those who leave don't come back. Some blame the beast. We stay close to camp now. Tell me about this beast. Though we've heard it howl, none have seen it. We've heard screaming too, and those who've travelled on have not returned alive. We hope against hope that they've found their way to Boston, as we must, if we're not to starve. But our dreams say they did not. There's really no way out. We can live here, on the edge of starvation, keeping our cheer as best we can. Or we can die in the woods, prey to a drooling beast. We choose to live. I must ask you about the camp. Ask? Where's your sister? Out. Making the rounds. Hunting if she finds game. One new smith stays, while the other new smith goes. She goes out alone? She's thrice the hunter. Anyone else is here. We'd only slow her down, she says. Have you been here long? Huh. <laughs> Not one of us knows for sure. Time here flies for some. For others it stands still. There's no night, so counting days is difficult. What would Thick Skin say? <laughs> She'd say about a month. She'd be lying. We both counted days, but the numbers didn't tally. I gave up. The nightmare twists the perception of the passage of time. These folk have not escaped the curse. Who about the place needs help, do you think? Something's not right at the forge. 
You could start there. In your forays into the woods, have you seen many bone walkers? What the hell's a bone walker? Corpses possessed by malignant spirits. The dead walking. You'd know if you'd seen one. God spare us. Have you? Of course not. Standard question. I have to ask it. Bone walkers seem drawn to us, but not them. Is it you? Is it me? We both? I'll take my leave of you for now. Rest. You'll need it for my sister's return. I'll send for you. She seems to like me. Let's find your cabin and see how much. I've slept in worse. And it smells better than Jacob Lynn's lean to. Poor lad. I wonder where he'll go. There. Now we won't freeze. I won't freeze. Forgive me. I ought to startled. Oh well. Ain't you a sight? Who are you, then? Red McCraith, ma'am, the banisher. To whom do I owe the pleasure? Oh, the Scotsman. I like your accent, and I like your manner, too. Nelly. Nelly Heaton. A friendly Londoner. I like her already. To the point, madam. Kate Newsmith worries for you, and for your husband, too. He around? Fortune left some hours ago, and hasn't come back. I confess I'm beginning to worry. What if the beast got him? Did he not say where he was going? Thick skin has him making nails for the stockade. She presses him, and he feels the weight of it. Could he have gone out in search of material? Doubtful. He's exhausted. He doesn't sleep. He works day and night. It wasn't always so. Coming to New Eden saved us. It saved the marriage. I should go look for your husband. He's no woodsman, so he can't have gone far. Please, do find him. I didn't come this far only to lose him now. Can I have a look around your house? Yes, if it helps. The forge is empty, no tools. Any idea why? No tools? That's strange. Why would your husband take tools with him? Why would he take all the tools with him? I don't know. Here's the thing. In your forge, I, I found a puddle of salt water. Any idea how it got there? The forge uses a lot of water, but that doesn't explain the salt. It had the mark of a ghost. What think you of that? A ghost? My lord, is my fortune in danger? Honestly, I don't know. I'm looking into it, I hope not. So... What's the chatter? Bad news travels faster than good. What would you like to know? How's life about the place? We're doing our best to make things work. The beast is worrisome, tis true. But thick skin knows what's what. I'm sure we'll be fine. What think you of thick skin new Smith? She ain't perfect, that's for sure. But she's independent, fair-minded, strong in body as in character. She cares for us. I know it in my heart, even if she doesn't show it. Why else would she shield us from the beast? 
What can you tell me of Kate Newsmith? I like her. She's different from her sister. Sensible, watchful. When she speaks, I listen. Let's trade, Mrs. Eaton. All right, let's. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Eaton. Welcome. I've enjoyed our chat. It's nice to have someone new to talk with. There are stains here. I can show you them. Let's finish here and see if the trail leads to our blacksmith. I have a feeling about the bed. Should we take a glimpse at the past? No ghost threatening Nelly. That's her husband. It seemed like he was fighting the urge to hurt her. So the blacksmith has gone missing with his tools. And a saltwater ghost haunts the forge. Let's go find it. A moment. That's handy. Imagine all those years hunting ghosts, how much time we could have saved. Come on, let's go find our blacksmith. What think you of the blacksmith and his wife? A ghost haunts Fortune Heaton and his smithy too. Aye, but whose? you may be for whatever you have done I thank you I thought I was done for fortune heaton sir and so very pleased that you came along red McCraith, the banisher weren't there two of you there were yes as it happens I've been looking for you you have uh, what for So, you're the blacksmith. What's that like, then? Uh, it's all right, I suppose. You busy? Yes, of course I am. <laughs> Lots of building work to be done. That means nails, a whole lot of nails, like an ocean of stupid bloody nails. I love when a man takes pride in his work. How are things with Nelly? Good, yeah, good. It's, uh, nice having a wife, a home. Nellie is, uh, a fine woman. 
clever, brave, generous and kind. She's a blessing. How did you meet? Me? How did we meet? Well, you know, we just, uh, met. Does he not remember? Or does he not want to say? Come now, Mr. Heaton. No need to be embarrassed. A wee bit of romance is good for a man. Romance? It's not. I, uh... I helped her with a thing. She helped me with a thing. We stayed together, helping each other with things. Doing right by one another can bring a couple together. Doesn't always need romance. What are you doing out here anyway? Do you not fear the prowling beast? Oh, I needed a walk, a bit of fresh air, a bit of light. Forge is... well, it's dark and hot, isn't it? I didn't mean to be a worry. We all enjoy walking the woods while burdened down with smithing tools. Why'd you bring your tools? Yeah, why did I bring my tools? Why? Uh, why? Because... Because they're wanted. That's why. I'm sorry, it's just... I'm losing my tiny little mind. And it's them godforsaken tools that's to blame. I start working with them, and then I look up, and half the day's gone, and I am somewhere else entirely, and... <laughs> that's not even the worst of it. When I return to the forge, the work is done. The tools are haunted and I'm getting rid of them, as deep in the woods as I can go. Did the haunted tools tell you to kill your wife? No. Yes. Maybe, no, I, I would never hurt her. Yes, they told me to hurt her. Maybe. Maybe I'd have hurt her. Can you help us? Yes. But I can't guarantee you'll like the result. I heard you praying. I thought I recognised the text. You did? You sure? Nelly painted him a pious Puritan. Aye. Thought he sounded Catholic. Oh, well, just... Coincidence? <sighs> Look, here's the truth. I'm a convert. I did it for Nelly. I am. Was Catholic. It was a convenience more than a calling. Keep it to yourself, please. I need to fit in around here. Now, I'm not here for you. You have other worries. <laughs> Don't I know it? Head for camp. I'll take a look at the tools. Once they're safe, I'll follow. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. Thank you, Banisher. I'll... <laughs> Thank you. The words of a ghost may resonate here. Mine! Mine! Mine, oh, mine. The ghost lays claim to the forge and everything in it. The flatter from the echo is missing from the toolbox. If it's not around here somewhere, he lied to us. Fortune the blacksmith came deep into the dangerous woods. He's no blacksmith, he's lying. We sent him home. I hope he's no danger for Nelly. The hammer. Looks like Fortune tried to get rid of it. The hammer is the ghost tie. Now to retrieve it without breaking my neck. Yes, that would be a shame. That's enough, Nelly. I warned you. Ah. I warned you this would happen again. No. You're pathetic. I want a divorce! <laughs> You're now Elizabeth Luxford. You are mine. 
and I'd sooner see you dead and cold than let you leave. What's going on here? Walk away, lad. This does not concern you. I think it does. What do you want to do? Oh, mother birds. Killed a man. With his own hammer. We should talk to his ghost. Show yourself. the banishes Antea Duarte and Red McWraith. Whose ghost are you? <laughs> Do we really have to listen to this bastard? Nothing good ever comes of talking to the dead. At times I'm tempted to agree. Who are you and what do you want with the blacksmith? <sighs> My forge. My wife. My name, all mine. The bastard stole them. Is he telling us our blacksmith's a fraud? Why are you here? I want what's mine, stolen away, pride from my grasp. I want my work, my name, my wife. Your wife is not your property. She was no one! A drudge who fancied herself a herbalist. <laughs> I plucked her from the dirt. I made her. All right, no. I'll not entertain this man a moment longer. You've been sowing madness in the mind of the man who replaced you. She can't escape me. Are you looking for revenge? I claim what's mine. She schemed it. He seized it. And I shall have it back. That night, on deck, Nelly asked for a divorce. What happened then? We saw what happened. I want to hear him say it. What happened on the boat? Ungrateful. Scheming. Errant. Oh. Watch it. Red, come on. Distempered. Feeble. A weak woman. Demanding care and giving none. I gave her a life and she stole mine. She had him kill me. That's not what I saw. I've had enough of this. Let's go. Now we know why Fortune Heaton died. He was a bastard. But murder is murder. Nelly and her fellow were haunted yet. And I'm concerned for their safety. I think Fortune's ghost is here. Let's end this now. You should have said something. I was afraid to worry you. No secrets, we said. We did. Because this only works if we're together. Right. Hush. Someone's coming. Banisher! You're back! Mr. McRae. My man came back and I hear I've you to thank for it. 
Don't celebrate just yet. I know the truth. Your secret is out. I don't know who you are, sir, but you're not Fortune Eaton. Don't be daft. Haskell hired the Puritan master blacksmith, Fortune Eaton. You're none of those things. You're not him. What do you want? I'd like your side of the story, madam. Very well. What? No. How do we know we can trust him? We don't. But we must take the chance. It's time. On the crossing from England, something happened. What was it? I'd had peace and quiet for weeks since we'd been aboard. Fortune was too sick to do anything. I even made a friend. I thought to myself, maybe. Maybe this new beginning will be good for us. Maybe you'll change. Before we left, I'd sworn he'd never lift a hand to me again. Well, guess what? We didn't plan on killing him. I swear on it. But it certainly was convenient. Aye. For once, the cards fell in my favour. Arthur Carty was dead and gone, and Fortune Heaton became a better man, if I say so myself. I mean, I did take part in the man's murder. But I tell you then that he deserved it. And I tell you the same now. You're not Fortune Heaton. So, who are you? I am. <laughs> to hell with it. You're right, I'm no blacksmith. I, sir, am the fugitive thief Arthur Carty. But a good man. A repentant, hard-working man. If I am those things, it's because you've shown me it's all right. I'm doing my best to make a better life. Really, I am. What were you running from? Just the legal consequences of my illegal life. You sent me to find your husband, Mrs. Heaton. Find him I did. Your husband's corpse rots on the ocean floor, and his ghost has followed you here. I ripped myself of him once. What shall it take to do it a second time? Fortune Heaton. Dead as alive, you're an angry man. Time to go. I made her. She is mine. I built it all, and they took it from me. And now your work and your name shall pass to Arthur Carty while you enter oblivion. Nellie will run the forge, and a better version of Fortune Heaton will walk the world. I am Fortune Heaton. Ever was, and ever will be. Not anymore. Be gone. There is nothing for you. Is it over? Is it done? Aye. He's gone. What will you tell the others? Will you expose us? Will I spill your secret to the camp? No, I won't. So? I've done my rounds, as you asked. And? The blacksmith and his wife were haunted by an angry ghost. It won't be coming back. I suppose I shall believe you. Anything else to report? Other hauntings are likely. I've no particulars as yet. All right. So, I'll thank you kindly, Mr. McWraith. You've done your part and earned your place. My sister should soon return. She'll surely want to meet you. Until then, you may stay. I'll take my leave. I do.
Kate came by. Thick skin is back and wants to see you. Why did she not wake me? Perhaps she resented playing the messenger. Perhaps she just wanted to make you late. She was vexed. Thick skin return has upset her. Kate reminds me of my sister. Aoife. Mm, Clan Macraith's little spitfire. Always at my heels. Or giving father's guards all kinds of hell. <laughs> She was a wee thing, but strong. More big men in armor didn't they scare her. She had more brains than her, and more wild too. <laughs> in sparring, she'd beat me, Andy. She would have made a fine swordswoman, had she grown. Someday I'd like to meet my brother and sister. I'm sorry? You're what? Twins. By my mother's letters, they must be eight years old. You never told me this. You never asked. What are their names? Ugh. What? I'm interested, that's all. You're bothersome. Ayomi Day is my sister. Temi is my brother. I had no idea. You got letters from home. My mother writes once a year. The letters take months to find me. If they find me at all. Until now, I've given it little thought. <laughs> Three Duarte children walk the world. God help us. Good boy. Now that you can count to three, we can move on to four. I hope the twins have more charm than you do. Did I mention thick skin was waiting for you? All right, all right. I'm going. I can give no order, but you return from the hunt and count them. Lull. The halfpenny redeemer come to save us. Thou may enter, O oh great saviour. Excuse my sister. Underestimating her would be a mistake. She's tougher than you. You're alive. Long story short, you had an angry ghost in your meeting house. It was fierce. I fell in the sea. And Taya died. Your lost pains is. But a good hunter should know when they've become the hunted. Is there news from New Eden Town? When you went to the meeting house, I gathered me flock and left. I've heard nothing since. Your faith in us gladdens my heart. I wasn't wrong, was I? But folk here still believe in you. What about the missing group of refugees? What about them? 
Kate told me they went missing before reaching your camp. Any chance they survived in the woods? Not the slightest. Otherwise, they would already be here. Those poor bastards are long dead. What became of those who stayed? Dead, or near it. I'm neither foolish enough nor mad enough to go find out. She thinks you a madman, or a fool. Maybe I'm both. Don't crow. Foolish madmen abound. Where lies the future for you? For the camp? For the people here? The plan was to walk across the mountains, but the cold put an end to that. For now, we stay. Till the weather lifts. The weather and the fear. They must feel the sun on their faces again and courage in their hearts. Courage rises in the darkness, woman. The sunshine follows after. You didn't ask me here to watch you drink soup. What do you want? Kate says you have metal. I can use that. There's a service I need from you. You've something important needs doing and you want me to do it. No wonder your sister's fuming. Kate may wish her skin were thick as mine, but wishing will not make it true. Being the youngest can be a burden. Double when your big sister is the chief. I'm no chief. I keep my head, that's all. For this, folk look to me. Speak frankly. What would you have me do? Banish a ghost that doesn't exist. Folk here believe in monsters. The fear makes them weak. Kill the beast. Kill their fear and give them back their strength. Fear can be good. We can't spare much, but you shall have a gun and powder and shot with it. Tis honest work. I presume you'll pay for it. I have the means to pay you. My word on it. Hmm. We'll see how that goes. You know the curse is real. Why not the beast too? The beast is nothing much. A bear, perhaps a wolf. A monster only in the mind. Why not kill it yourself? Because when the Banisher kills the beast, everyone here will believe the monster dead. I'll hunt your beast, whatever it is. If you answer one last wee question. You may ask it. What's with the name? No one rightly calls their daughter Thick Skin. My birth name be best forgotten. Thick Skin better suits the world. Fair enough. In the wild, we carry muskets. And we carry these. Whistle for help if the need be great. And the gun? My sister can spare her musket. If you can get it from her. Kate will be delighted. Kate will be hurt. I predict fireworks. She won't give up the gun without a quarrel. Don't you have business elsewhere? Go, save us all from the beast. Go do my sister's char work. I need a musket. Thick skin said I should have yours. You'll rot in hell first, and so will she. This should be good. Killing the beast helps everyone. Your sister only means to protect you. She traps me. I cannot leave camp unarmed, and she knows it. She wants me to give up my freedom and hand it to you. Not a chance. There's pain behind the anger. I doubt you'll blunt her temper. Your sister protects you. Be glad. She does not protect me. She constricts me. <sighs> Thick skin measures worth by metal. The strong will live and the weak will die. She chose you to hunt the beast with my musket. 
She doesn't have to say a word about what she thinks of me. I'm just going out to hunt a wolf, a bear, maybe. You'll prove your worth another time. Thick skin wishes the beast a wolf or bear. Wishing shall not make it true. <laughs> Without a musket, you'll die. I'm sorry. I wish there were another way. You don't look sorry. Take the gun, banisher. Take it and get lost. The flint's a little tired, but she strikes fine. Unlike some, she won't go off half-cocked. I'll take good care of her. And she of me, no doubt. Oh. The more I know Thick Skin, the more I like her. Is it a kind and friendly nature? Some would call her ruthless. But is she wrong? Aye, she's wrong. We survive when we care for each other. There's honour in that. Mm -mm. Climbed down from your tree then, have you? Aye, with no help from you. What's your name, lad? Beloved Scudder, if you must know it. I see you found yourself a gun. Kate gave it to me. I'll check, you know. May I pass? If Kate gave you her gun, I suppose you may pass. But I don't counsel it. Bad things happen in the woods. Only thick skin walks safely out there. Thick skin has a lofty reputation. Is it earned? Earned. Without thick skin, we'd be starved and dead. Even her sister knows it, and they hate each other. Do you know Kate well? Well, no one knows Kate Newsmith well. An old heartache sees to that. If your first love ends bad, they say, your heart never mends. Thank you for your time, Scudder. Good day to you. See you again, McCraith. If you're lucky. Behind Kate the Spitfire stands Kate the Broken-Hearted Girl. Hot people. A target for your new toy. Ten guineas says you can't shoot as sweetly as you talk. <laughs> I shoot just fine, thank you very much. That beam is literally hanging by a thread. Twenty guineas says you miss your first shot. <laughs> you can owe me so much money. See? Easy. Not so easy when the target fights back. I love these old underground places. I don't. Huska Castle nearly cost me an eye. <laughs> Investigating the cellar was your idea, remember? Strange tracks. Something passed this way. Something huge. Hell, this is grim. It forced its way through here, dug up all the wolves, and plucked them out. Not even the younglings survived. What could have done this? Vengeance. Vengeance incarnate. A memory ripples here. Whatever butchered the wolves spoke as one, with many voices. Any spirits in borrowed flesh? Could it be a scourge? Yes, a scourge. Powerful and very angry. 
I thought scourges were rare. Have you ever faced one? Once. A trade ship into Bordeaux sank in a storm. The slaves came back as a scourge. To banish it, I made 50 pounds of bane powder and shot it with a cannon. By then, it had killed the captain and half the crew and the ship's owner. Tragic, really. Fancy that. A body. And there are teeth marks. He's not letting the undead get in his way, is he? Make a run for it! Vivid memory from the dead is so the longer path is safer, you must take it. Why won't you come with us then? The quickest she'll go ahead. We'll wait with food and shelter ready, then we'll all travel on together. Nicholas here shall walk with you. There'd be no better shot among us. Do you agree, Doolan? I'll do my best for you, Samuel. Of course I will. But if thick skin says we'll be safe. I believe it. In the wild, we carry these. Whistle for help if the need be great. Someone is generous with her whistles. What use they were to this poor bugger. If this Doolin fellow was meant to protect the missing group, I dread to think what became of them. It was wise to split the group. The larger the band, the slower it moves. It wasn't a cattle drive. They're talking about people. Thick skin was practical. She knew what she was doing. Aye, that much is clear. Someone was here. Some time ago. Take heart indeed. Maybe they're still out there somewhere. Maybe. Papers. Half bond. Do you wish to go back? Home? We go where our work takes us. That's our home now. <sighs> the lost settlers. Or what the beast has left of them. Oh, God. They didn't stand the chance. There is no God here. Voices straining for release. The sound comes from those spectral webs. Ugh. I could eat an ox. We just broke bread, Emily. A crust of bread and rancid cheese makes not a meal, dear sister. Ho! Oh, Samuel! When's our next stop? Quit griping and push your cart along. We'll get there when we get there.
a ripple from the second group. Let's hear what they have to say. Your father is hurt and can walk no further. We must rest and treat the wounded. We must find shelter. The cold night will kill us all. Fire will bring the wolves. And so does that accursed whistle. The wolves are already here. Where is Nicholas with the help from Thickskin's camp? Where's our deliverance? We'll sound the call once more. Thick skin will come. She swore on it. The whistles only break the wolves upon us. Help will come. Help will come, I know it. Upon our souls. The huntress has killed us. Rot in hell, thick skin news me! Rot in hell! Keep them safe. How can you defend this? I don't defend it. I do understand it. The second group died terrible deaths. But the scourge did not kill them. And yet there must be a connection. Those claw marks are smaller than the ones we saw earlier. The tracks start with the expedition and grow in size as they progress. Surrounding trees have been drawn in by a powerful force. The beast made itself from the spectres of the dead settlers. Here's where it happened. There were more than a few settlers. This scourge is going to be huge. Damn thick skin. Our gifts just don't stop giving. Are you ready for the ritual? No, but let's do it anyway.
come out, or if you are, come on, show yourself. Red. It's behind me, isn't it? Yes. Of course it is. Every bloody time. Surely too big to be a wolf. It's a scourge, all right. Anger shaped to kill. We wish you no harm. We know all about the wolf whistles. The whistle stick skin gave you. Oh, shite! Too quick on your feet, are you? on your feet, are you? Ready and waiting. Betrayer. Not Vexkin. Kate. It spoke her name with just one voice. Her voice. The voice of the nightmare. You're certain? To the core of me. Within this creature lurks some part of my killer. <laughs> Skin and Kate both accused. Is anyone in these damn woods innocent? Then it were real. This beast. How did I miss you on my travels through the woods? Because it did not want you. It wants your sister. Stay, Scotchman. I can use you. You gave them dog whistles. You sent them to die. Those with metal would have reached camp, and I'd have used them too. Those who died won't need feeding. 
The weak die that the strong may live. You tricked them. I tested them. This be the way of it. This be the way of the world. We have a hidden watcher. The sister. Kate? Show yourself. What? You're unarmed! Get yourself back to camp! All these long years... All these long years, I wish to be like you. To be as tough as you. If I was stalwart like my sister, I thought, I'd have saved her. I'd have saved the woman I love. I wish to be like you. And I see it now. I was just like you. Cold, selfish, afeard of my own heart. And the woman I loved died for it. So many dead. You killed them as I killed Deborah. Look at us. We have no metal at all. Everything I did, I did so that you could live. You're my sister. I love you. Would you love me if I was weak? Or would you leave me too to the wolves? How dare you even think it? Oh. I dare because I care. Enough! I've done your hot work. I banished the monster you swore didn't exist, and now I know the truth. I know what you did. I made the hard choice. Do you think it pleased me? Do you think it were easy? Would saving them have been so much harder? You abandoned them because it was the easy thing to do. Easy? Look about you. Nothing here is easy, not even for the strong. The weak have no chance at all. No. It's best they die quick, that the rest may live. Them wolves did us all a service. Better some dead by fang than all dead by famine. That makes a grim kind of sense. The beast spoke with many voices. One we, I, had heard before. The voice from the chapel. And Taya's killer. It charged you, Kate, with betrayal. Mind thy own damn business, banisher. And I'll mind mine. This thing can have naught to do with me. She's telling the truth, but so was the beast. It named her for a reason. Secrets keep us chained. Have courage. Free yourself. Leave her be. She has naught to say to you. Like us all, I'd have much to say. But the time to speak was long ago. She fears a reckoning. Let's give her one. Look about you. You brought this curse upon yourselves. Falls to me to lift it. The older sister's heart is withered. She'll never feel remorse. Let her pay. She's hard as stone, too far gone. Mumble all you want, I regret nothing. The curse struck, and I alone saw the danger. I acted. And now it is I who must act. sacrifice the innocent to ensure your own survival. I can't let you away with it. 
To heal, Kate must be free of her sister's grip. You mean to kill me? Then you're just like me, only more foolish. You mean to kill her? I mean to save her. A malignant spirit lives in thick skin, you smith. And I will banish it. I've no evil spirit. I've done nothing wrong. Demon. Sprite. Evil spirit. I banish you. Great tormentor. I banish you. Life to the living. Death to the dead. My name were roses, a flower. I became the pitiless thorn. But I did not make the world. It made me. Red. Look. The curse has lifted. Here, at least. I hope she'll be all right. And you? Are you all right? It's a while now since I've been all right. I'm determined. I'll have to do. Look at that. It's beautiful. No. Look at it. Into the valley of death we go. The scourge troubles me. It's gone. The curse is lifted. The curse remains. The beast was born of it. A scourge made in equal measure from the treachery of the Newsmith sisters. Worse, though shaped by Thick Skin's betrayal, it was driven by Kate's. Remember what Charles said. A nightmare is the ghost of one who is terribly wronged. This nightmare's cold fury goes far beyond the Newsmith sisters. It cursed New Eden as a whole. 
I wonder what they did to earn such hate. Promises unkept, covenants broken, the curse has its roots in betrayal, treachery that perhaps demanded sacrifice. To forsake your love hurts everyone. Kate is proof of that. It's rarely so simple. Thick skin is proof of that. Do you need a moment to rest? I'd rather keep going to New Eden, but I am probably need a breather. You're thinking. So are you. Penny for your thoughts. I was thinking of Kate, of her horror when she saw the ghost, of her pain when she lost her sister. She was desolate, and yet relieved, and terrified. I can't shake the picture. Whoever Deborah was, Kate loved her. Thickskin tried to protect her sister from the consequences. When I laid the blame on thick skin, I felt her pain. I felt it too. A potent mix. Fear, love, resentment, unconditional acceptance. Sisterhood can be complicated. When all this is over, you can go home and get to know the Duarte twins. Get to know your sister. I knew a sister. Like Kate, I lost her. What happened? When I was very young, I had a friend. She was my chosen sister and very dear to me. I opened my heart. It was a mistake. I played with fire and was burned. I'm sorry. It was a long time ago. I have a new family now. I have found the love of my life. I love you. Always. Rest now. I have the watch. I'll sit by your bedside until I can hold you once again. Come here. I want to try something. Hmm. Good morning to you too. I think we can break this down together. Sure. Let me grab my pickaxe. Just trust me. Did you feel the way I tore the veil? Aye. I did. And we did it together. What did I do? You brought me focus. That's plenty. Can you do it again? Oh, I intend to. who died for her novice. Ah, the witch's novice. Ho oh, there, Antea. Are you not surprised to see me? You're a little early, but no. Not surprised. On my return, Ceridian told me our poor wee banisher would turn up haunted. A haunted banisher. Well, 
It is funny, isn't it? What was that thing you fought? Thing? Oh, him. He's a bloody nuisance, is what he is. Are you badly hurt? I've tangled with old Mossad before. A couple of minutes to myself and I'll be fine. You look like you need a moment. Can we help? <laughs> Thought you'd never ask. Some of my spirit chasers went out. Ugh, that's how old Saul crossed the hem. The hem? The hem. Where the fabric of the living world meets that of the dead. Ah. The veil between the visible and the invisible. Whatever soothes your soul, Vanisher. Rest. Heal. Tell us how to fix the spirit chasers. The spell is cast. You need only light them. Be careful. Old Mossed won't have gone far. Oh, I'll sit down now. Good luck. Have fun. So, how do we do this? We light the spirit chasers with flint and steel, I guess, I think. Pay attention. Here's one more. Bonding spirit chick. One more to go. Is that them all? Don't count on it. That one next? That one next. I'll get you too. This should be enough. There. Witchcraft is easy. I don't know what the fuss is about. I'm sure your witch friend would agree. I think I'll just tell her we're done. What was crawled up that spectre's arse and stung him angry? A lost battle? A betrayal? Cowardice in the ranks? Who knows? Did I see you talking to a crow just now? Yes and no. All ready to go then? Good. She's waiting for you. A witch is always this obtuse. A banish is always this ignorant. Come on, we're taking a bow. It'll be fun. No, we're going to New Eden. The nightmare's grip on the world is too strong. The fog is too thick. You cannot enter its stronghold. There's no way back to the meeting house. Not yet, and not without help. We've done fine on our own so far. You're dead. Maybe you're not doing quite as well as you think. <laughs> you're blunt, but I take your point. We'll talk to Ceridian before we move on. That's better. Follow me. Careful. Don't rot the bow. Have we far to go? How far is far? Don't worry. You'll be safe. Safe? The Mire is home to many angry spirits. But my mistress keeps them quiet. <laughs> Dead quiet. That spectre you fought looked like a harvester. Vanishes and their labels. He'll surely be back. So will I. The veil seems thinner here. 
Always has been. We call them the Maya Marshes, but the nearby tribes call it the Ill Mouth. Stay too long, you'd get sick. Is that why Ceridian's wards wane faster than they should? That is because she's dying. I'm sorry. Life's a journey. Death is but one step. This is almost as lovely as that ride through Hedengracht. All we're missing is the hailstones and the Russia at our heels. I'm sure we can arrange something. You do plan the best escapes. The soul soul. What does he want? Destruction, bloodshed, Ceridian's head on a plate. They must have known each other once. We could help you banish him. You banishers are so arrogant. He's Ceridian's business. Best we don't interfere. The spectres on the shore aren't moving. The marshes are well protected. Are those soldiers? That, Miss Duarte, is Old Saul's army. You're young. You're dead. I meant your essence is strong for one your age. How did you come to be here? How did you come to waste your potential by being a banisher? Do you believe I'd make a better witch? Yes, I do. You'd be doing yourself and me a favor. Welcome to Ceridian's Island. There is much power here. Oh, you noticed that, did you? Like I say, welcome to Ceridian's Island. She's at home, and expecting you. Follow the path until you find a black pond near ancient ruins. I'll see you there soon enough. How does she do that? It's a trick, right? There's more to that one than tricks. The girl is gifted. If we want to stop for a wee minute, this place will do. Hanging dolls. Witches do like to be creepy. As a child, I made dolls just like those. <laughs> I bet you did. Seeker's Black Pond. I can see why they call this the Ill Mouth. What is that? Antia? No, that's not quite true. I knew who I was, it's just... I was lost, and I had nowhere to go. I had no when to go. Does that make sense? Time lays traps for the dead. It's never fair. His voice was a beacon. The light in the darkness that led me back to me. And to the world. You have a powerful connection, you two. Or will have. Or had. Possibly all three. And here he is, the other banisher. Greetings. Good day. Come, sit. It's been too long. 
Have we met? Of course we have. Just now. Also later. Decades ago. Never mind. It's good to see you, Red McRae. I told her our story. I hope you don't mind. Such an ordeal. I'm so very sorry you have to go through it. How hard it must be for you both. I... thank you. But now you're here together, and I'm glad. Because you will only be able to end this together. Why have we found so little native presence in New Eden? They have been here, but they have never settled. Wise men and women know that the region, the Maya marshes especially, are rotten. Is that why you settled here? Here, the hem is thin and frail, and the Maya rich in agitated spirits. It is also secluded and hard to find. Both excellent reasons to remain. Here, we may hide away and mend the hem. We must reclaim Antea's body, but Seeker tells us the meeting house can't be reached. The fog cannot be crossed. Seeker is right. The fog is the nightmare. I've never seen so many spectres in one place. Is this really the nightmare's work? Yes, and at the same time, no. As the nightmare's reach extends, the void draws closer. The thinner the threshold, the weaker the hem. That disturbs the balance between the invisible and the incarnate. There is no balance between the living and the lingering dead. It's not for me to change your mind. I believe that in times of chaos, we should seek equilibrium in all things, and equity for all beings. The being that killed me deserves no equity. Who are you exactly? Who is Seeker? We, Banisher, are witches. Aye, that much I knew. Ceridian. Name sounds very familiar. To a Scotsman, it should. Once, a long time ago, I too was named Seeker. An old friend called me Ceridian. Little Seeker, he said. Serahin, I. When I needed a new name, I took the one he'd given me. Or, at least, a form of it that fits my tongue. Ceridian fits me well, I think. You brought us here. Why? You have many questions, and I have little time. I have a few breaths left yet, but yes, this is the twilight. Still... After the darkness comes the dawn. You're dying. Soon I'll be one with the trees, root and bark. But that is not why I asked you here. Dearest, dears, the path ahead is yet unclear. But know this. If you are to defeat the nightmare, your hearts must be open. Open. Of course, to each other. No barriers. Your bond must be strong. The nightmare is stronger. Wherever we turn, its power is inescapable. The same is true of many things. Darkness, yes. But also, light. When you died, dear Antea, New Eden crumbled, but some yet live. Seek them out. Help them. The Nightmare won't like that. No. 
You are, after all, a threat to her existence. And rightly so. She believes you cannot reach into her domain. She is wrong. There is a way. The Void. A dreadful place beneath both the Incarnate and the Invisible. When you have learned to walk the Void, you may use it to enter the Nightmare's Den. First, you must free the people of New Eden from her grip. To reach New Eden and retrieve my body, we must help the very people who created the Nightmare in the first place? Yes. Excuse my lack of enthusiasm. Can we not just go back to the meeting house and do our jobs? You must release folk here from her grasp. Only then, through the void, may you reach New Eden Town and confront her. How do we access the void? Is there a ritual? In places, the void is breached. Follow the beacons, do not stray, and all will be well. Our seeker crafted you a tuning key. With it, you may open the breach. Don't linger. Time is fickle. Would a hedge witch have something interesting in her swamps for a banisher? I always have, and I always will. The nightmare in the meeting house was by far the most powerful ghost I've ever faced. From where did it come? Unforgiving wrath is a bottomless well for vengeful spirits. But in this case, I suspect an even more vile source involved. We know the beast was linked to the Nightmare, but we're not so clear on how. Through the beast, the Nightmare inflicted its curse upon the settlers. The beast was its avatar. I'm sure it has others. What are they, exactly? They are... manifestations of her power. They may also represent her only weakness. The Nightmare's spirit was shattered by the violence that created it. Properly studied, the pieces may provide the key to lifting her curse. What do you know of Deborah? Not much. I have avoided the people of New Eden for decades. I do know she was tried for witchcraft. Was she a witch? Was she one of yours? Would it matter if she was? She was no witch. She was a woman. A victim of the basest of human fears. By the beach as I drowned, you sent Seeker to find me. How did you know where to look? Are you asking an old hedge witch how she knows what goes on in her own garden? The woods and rivers are full of friendly claws. And feathers and scales. I always know what I need to know. I guess that's the best answer we can expect. It is the best of all those I've tried, dearest dears. Thank you, Ceridian. We'll be off. Before you leave, tell me. What did you choose? What do you mean? Each of you made a promise to the other. What was it? What did you choose? I chose to stay. I see. The price, in essence, will be high. But you know this. Aye, we do. The tuning key is on the table. In the void, it will protect you. Seeker waits at the pool to show you the way. The tuning key is on the table. In the void, it will protect you. Seeker waits at the pool to show you the way. 
funny looking spinning wheel. Do you weave with it? Of course. <laughs> I weave essence, Red McGrath. Ceridian gave us a tuning key. Now I know how you pull your little disappearing trick. It's no trick. It's what we do to survive. Too many bastards out there want us dead. This must be one of the breaches Ceridian mentioned. Yes. This is a void breach. But yours are a little further down, in the cave. You'll see. This one is special. It's the last and only way into New Eden Town since the bridge burned down. We could go back to New Eden right now? Why would you want to do that? The Nightmare is strong. She has New Eden by the proverbials. Loosen her grasp, and maybe, just maybe, you can walk through that breach and live. All right, all right. We get it. You have your tuning key. Hold on to it for dear life. That shouldn't be a problem. Once through the breach, there's no turning back. Keep going and don't look back. Void walking. Can you tell me more about it? I use it to leap from one breach to another, as Ceridian taught me. I don't dally, nor should you. Why not? The void is terra incognita. I suspect Ceridian knows, but isn't saying. Bad sign, that. Very bad sign. I'm curious. What do you think of the Nightmare yourself? I think the Nightmare is the child of our father's iniquities. And of our own sins, too. Do you admire it? I fear it. But I accept its wrath, as I accept the rain. <laughs> and New Eden surely deserves the flood. Tell me about yourself, Seeker. Hmm. How do I put this politely? No. So, who's Deborah? I know no Deborah. I don't think I've ever known a Deborah. We'll be going. Hope to talk again soon. Yes. I do so enjoy our little chats across the hem. I suppose we'll come back to this one eventually. Can't wait, can you? Is this Seeker's Cave? Only one way to find out. Remember what we were told. Follow the beacons. Move fast. No looking back. This place looks barren. Lifeless. This is the realm of the dead. This is the underworld. Let's not linger. <laughs> voice from long ago. I banished its owner. What does that mean? It means we must leave. Now. The next beacon is dead. Oh, what new abomination is this? I'd say a sorrow used as a Cerberus. That's unheard of. <laughs> Run! 
right here, you know. From what hold did this horror crawl? I don't know, but we need to go. that? Ceridian's key was supposed to get us through unnoticed. I don't know. Are you all right? I'll do. But that nightmare over there, we know so little about it. That worries me. What about you? Whatever the reason, that nightmare is here because of something these men and women did. New Eden reeks of their guilt. I died because of them. Curse these people. Curse them and their secrets and their sins. We all get there. We always do. Are those breaches really safe? We were protected. You heard the whispers. The despair and that one voice. It called to you. Something knew you were there. It saw you. I thought... For, for a moment, I thought of them. Those poor butchered boys. I swear in the void I heard... They're screaming. Wayne's sent to die for their sultan's pride. It was like I was back in the Balkans. Those ghosts are gone. You asked for their ascent and I gave it to them. They're not in the void. I know. This void. Is it hell? Is that what we saw? Is that what we've been sending all those ghosts we've banished? Or is it limbo? A timeless in-between filled with tortured souls? When we banish a ghost, we destroy it. The teaching is clear. What if the teaching is wrong? I heard the voices. They worry me too. But the teaching can't be wrong. We should have known where we were sending those poor souls. What if you end up there too? All is well. As long as we stay together, all is well. Aye. All is well. Right. Seeker wasn't lying about the burned down bridge. Which way? North by the mountains or south through the lowlands? Let's pick one and see where it takes us. The nightmare can take so many forms. The snow, broken bridges. All of it. I know. You always wonder what. That spectre's seen a corpse, and it wants it for its own. Eyes peeled. These will be the Harrows. An imaginative name. There's a ring to it. The landscape here is more pleasant. There are fields and pastures and better weather. Can you feel the warmer air? I don't feel it, not really. But I know it's there. If I focus, I can still see the beauty of the world. I'd be tempted to think the warmer air means a warmer welcome. I suspect I'll be wrong. Trust that instinct, young apprentice, for it will serve you well.
For years, Kate Newsmith believed she did not measure up to her sister. Now she knows that in her kindness, she is at least her sister's equal. Thick skin has paid for her sins. But what of her sister? What will Kate do now? Her people look to her for their future, their protection, their survival. Fishing boat, eh? Cause that's more plausible than a galleon. Adventure? Sounds fun. You're such a little boy sometimes. Whatever grip it is the nightmare has here, you'd never know by looking. The village is full of ghost wards. They're afraid of something. Leave them up. Cause no trouble. Oh there! Anyone home? Where did they go? in great wrath upon my soul to pray for those tongues and hearts fixed fair on the fires of hell that from friends find fortitude in our success exiled from our homes by the devil's machinations we congregate before the lord in this new meeting house we gather we worship we overcome and we shall be well protected by the holy ward my son now makes under my instruction. For I have spent hours countless in your service, poring through books and papers, devouring the oeuvre of my peers, that our meeting house be safe. Fairfax Haskell, for whom the word pompous was invented. Half built? Yes. Open to the four winds. Yes, but already it is resplendent with our faith. A shining reminder of our renewed belief in better days. McCraith, Mr. McCraith. <laughs> I thought you, I thought you. What happy portent, what most excellent news. What blessings. I applaud your valorous deeds, O oh, fate, I say. Dead, sir, I thought you dead. Maybe I am. Do not make light of such matters, my friend, for the devil's wrath is wide awake, and his claw scratches at our door, metaphorically speaking. I'm alive. I promise. My friends, I shall deliver this sermon another time. The battle with the Devil's Legions is ongoing, and Mr. McCraith and I have much to discuss. Thank you, Lammy. Behold this miracle of ours, Mr. McCraith. 
Exiled we, yet in our darkest hour we find the moral vigor to build this humble monument to resilience. But you and I must speak of darker matters. For we, erudite men of higher learning, know that evil yet walks. There is much work to be done. Indeed there is. Yes, yes. Forgive the inelegance of my welcome. You are alone. Do I surmise that Miss Duarte is no more? It should have been me. The Lord is near unto them that are of a contrite heart, and will save such as be afflicted in spirit. I'm so sorry for your loss. Grief is a journey, long and painful, but you do not walk the road alone, I promise you. Oh, I know. I know. In time, God healed my wounds. May you two find peace. Now, I regret that even at this most burdensome time for you, I must move with haste to business and beg once more for your help. How may I help? One among us deals with the devil. The colony suffers grave misfortune and, I am ashamed to say, the evil comes from within. You and I share great expertise, but I am a man of position. Well, you, sir, are much more familiar with field work. Go, meet my people, walk amongst them. Learn which of them secretly serves the demon, that we may expunge this evil malady from our body politic. It is a witch hunt wise, here, now. Well, it is not just wise, it is imperative. This servant of the devil has delivered a pestilence unto my people. The black spy himself desires our destruction. First with sickness of the flesh, and then, when we are down with sickness of the spirit, it pits one against the other. Suspicion tears this community apart once again. All this to weaken my people and lead them away from the light of God. What makes you think there is a witch at work here? Aye, sir, I'm a man of God and intellect. I can read the signs. When a so-called mystery disease afflicts half of my people overnight, there can be only one culprit. It is the devil's doing, sir. Probably through one of his servants. For you see, I understood immediately that the water in the well had been tainted. There are no strangers here. You could self-accept it. No one has fled. The guilty woman, or man, I suppose, remains within the village. As evil walks, the evil are emboldened, but this witch shall see her downfall, or his, of course, as did the last one, as will the next. Some years ago, you may have heard tell of this, I made my name on the execution of a terrible witch. It pains me that I must do it once more. This illness, tell me of it. Upon my arrival here in the Harrows, I immediately set about protecting the place with consecrated tokens. Safeguarded from the curse, we all felt safer for a time. Then some devil poisoned the well, our only source of water, someone on the inside, mind. Spoiled water proves nothing. A wise point and well-made banisher, if not for the fact that we have been, for months on end, under the obvious influence of a terrible curse. One way or another, the devil has found an agent among us. And who knows what nefarious ill-doing old Black Spy plans next. I noted your ghost wards, with some interest. Ghost wards, an interesting name. I call them Sanctifiers, a name more palatable to my flock. 
Why did you not use them in New Eden when the curse began? It was more complicated to convince the whole congregation of the necessity to use magic. Here, people have more trust in my unmovable probity. This requires a great deal of occult knowledge. Where did you learn your craft? Etienne Roulet, one of the greatest demonologists of our time, is a good friend of mine. I improved upon his work. A man in your position must know what goes on in his own community. Why, of course I know all that there is to know. Or near enough. Ask your question, sir. Ask away. How goes the colony? Sir, the body politic bears a heavy weight. Not content with weakening their flesh, the devil's evil attacks the people's hearts and minds. Until you expose the culprit, the harmony of this divinely beautiful commonwealth shall remain marred by suspicion and mistrust. Long story shortened, people are not getting along. How did you, a man of position and faith, become a, a demonologist? Ah, yes. If you'll indulge me for a moment, I shall explain, in the briefest manner possible. Though blessed with intellect and no little faith, I also had privilege. I had the means for an education, time and place with which to study. For a time, my father was a pupil of Henry Boggart, the great demonologist. He had the books, I had the aptitude. When he passed, I donned his mantle. My father taught me about duty. I have gifts, faith, Intellect, position, I must protect them. I must use them to protect my people. This is my duty. This is my burden. Your son, how would you describe him? Lamentation, how would I describe him? I, well, he's curious, inquisitive, I mean, as opposed to peculiar. Although he has his moments there, too. I tried to teach him demonology, to make him the third generation of witch hunters. Ah, but he revealed no disposition. Occult knowledge could only obfuscate his good nature. At heart, he is a naive boy who reads a lot and doesn't say much. I am no witch hunter. My business is with the lingering dead. For a fee, yes, I know. But you can't deny evil practitioners exist. A few years ago, I had to cleanse this community from such a threat. Why would she curse your colony? Why would anyone choose to separate from God's flock? I'm afraid some just want to see the world burn, Mr. McCraith. By the grace and charity of the good Lord, she was exposed. It was my honor to serve him in sending her to hell where she belonged. Her mask was a good one, as if butter would not melt upon her tongue. But you cannot fool a man of faith and intellect. No, sir, you cannot. You'll not mind me saying it, but for a Puritan paradise, you seem to get more than your fair share of witches. God has not forsaken us, but someone here does the devil's work. Find me a witch, Mr. McCraith. Return this place to the Lord. I'm a working man, Governor, but the Lord does seem happy to pay, so I'll do what I can. I'll take my leave of you, Governor. Of course. Outside, you must take the stairs. While you're with us, the first house on the left shall be your home. Another witch hunt. That just tells me he's hiding something. Mind you, I'd like to know what's causing the sickness. A real life, actual banisher here in the Harrows.
You're the governor's son, right? I... Uh, yes, sir. Lamentation Haskell. Friends call me Lammy. Oh, they would if I had any. Please, call me Lammy. I have so many questions, sir. So many questions. But I suspect this is not the time. No, not the time. But perhaps you may help me anyway. Me? Why, if I can help, I'd be honoured. So tell me, Lammy, what do you do? Uh, what? How do you spend your days? I assist my father, especially with the ghost wards. That keeps me very busy. When I can, I continue my research into the mysteries of life. Wildlife, mostly. If I can find any. Those that aren't dead have left New Eden. Who can blame them? Must be hard, being the governor's son and all. Is it? I don't know. I've never been anyone else's son. Hard to grow up in his shadow, I would have thought. Only if you like the attention, not me. I just want to read books and learn stuff. People leave me alone, mostly. I like that. Mostly. Your father spoke of the pestilence. He did? Then, sir, you know as much as I do. If you have an opinion of your own, I'd be glad to hear it. Since you ask it, I believe a thing most vile assails us. An evil of origin unknown and perhaps unknowable. So the pestilence is part of the curse? Uh, y yes. Of course, the curse. Of course it's the curse. What else could it be? Those ghost wards are quite unique. They are, aren't they? Conceived by Etienne Roulet, but made by my father. Do you use them as well in your line of work? Not really. I mostly talk to ghosts. I don't repel them. Of course. Still, each tool has its purpose, and these troubled times we need all the tools we can get. Magic is glorious when wielded by the righteous. You seem to know a lot about it. Uh, oh, if only, sir, if only. I'm still learning. Many of the subtleties and nuances escape me yet. Your father believes there is a Harrow's Witch. Have you noticed anyone acting strange? I... I'd answer, sir, I surely would, only things being as they are, everyone is acting strange. The curse brought illness, illness brought division, division has led to strife. We could do with some healing, sir, we could. We need you to bring us peace. Good day to you, Lammy. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you both. And a good day to you too, sir. And wasn't that quite the entrance you made? You'll be the talk of the town. So, what brings you to our wee corner of the world? The governor bade me make the rounds. He suspects evil doing. If it's evil doing you're after, you may turn around and hurry back to New Eden Town. I met your partner there, the woman. It seems like a lifetime ago now. May God hold you and protect you in your grief. Now, if it excuse us, my sister's not feeling well and we must hurry home. When I met Elizabeth in New Eden Town, she seemed healthy. Dear Eve, I didn't catch your names. God be with you in your terrible pronunciation. Mary Claire O'Hara, this is my sister Elizabeth. Noticed anything strange around here of late? Strange? A fine word for the devil's work. I call it evil. Look around you. The harrows are dying. Our flock took sick. Every last animal dead. Ram, lamb and you. Then the people took their turn. Many of our neighbours are with the Lord. At least, that's where we hope they are. 
If there's witchery afoot, I'll need help finding the culprit. Do you have suspicions you'd care to share? Well, Caleb Watson lately talks to himself. And if you interrupt him, why, he's as rude as a goat. And he was such a well-mannered man, too. Lord forgive me, but I don't like him. The man has stopped washing. He reeks. Caleb Watson, was it? Where can I find him? He's the cobbler. So you'll find him in the cobbler shop. I'm no healer, but I'll help if I can. Do you have plants as need gathering? Something to ease the pain. All the meadows sweet and vervain in the world will not help this fever, I fear. We need no help from the godless. Thank you very much. Our faith guides and protects us. And I pray that you get better, ma'am. God will surely make me whole again. She's dangerously sick. Either she doesn't know it, or she knows it and is hiding it. I'm no healer, but I'll help if I can. Do you have plants as need gathering? Something to ease the pain. All the meadows sweet and vervain in the world will not help this fever, I fear. We need no help from the godless. Thank you very much. Our faith guides and protects us. And I pray that you get better, ma'am. God will surely make me whole again. She's dangerously sick. Either she doesn't know it, or she knows it and is hiding it. I'll let you rest so. Slan live. Goodbye to you. Be sure to fear the Lord and faithfully serve him. Goodbye to you, sir. Good day to you, sir. Likewise, Red McCraith. You? A pericottle, I'm the baker. What are you doing out here in the rustics? I'm a banisher. I'm looking for ghosts. I find no ghosts here, sir, nor demons. The governor, in his piety, sees to that. I envy your faith, Mr. Cotto. How's that working out so far? Have you noticed anything strange lately? Changes in demeanour, odd comings and goings. Lucy Barrow goes picking plants. All furtive like. I've seen her. I've watched her. She puts them in her strange concoctions. Won't tell me what's in there. Maybe she'd spill it to you. And where might I find this Lucy Barrow? The ale wife, when she's not furtively picking herbage, may be found in the ale house. A man can do any number of things with his life. What drew you to baking? Well, any of a dozen reasons. I'll not bore you with all 13. That's also how old I was when my parents died. I needed work. The baker needed a boy. He was a hard man. His wife was a pure-hearted woman. Taught me well. It is hard work, but I love it. I love it, dear. What brought you to New Eden? Were they short a baker? Elsewhere, folks backslide. Here, we know the value of our daily bread, of God's own bounty. Here, the baker is near in position to a minister. What's the word around here? Ah, it's gossip you want. Mm, so be it. Recently, as I made my way to the mill, I saw Ishmael Lore sneak into Phoebe Walcott's barn, his arms laden. Now, I don't, don't know what he carried, but since then, he has seemed skittish. How's life in the Harrows? Does it taste sweet now, or does it taste bitter yet? Life in the Harrow, sir, tastes like hard work, and so it bloody should. What can you tell me about the Governor? Pious man, of great eloquence. He likes a sour loaf, fresh from the oven, so warm, the butter melts right through. I trust him completely. He's devoted, he serves his congregation, diligent and mindful, just like me. What 
can you tell me about Lamentation High School? He seems a good boy. Peculiar. Not the brightest. He's not like his father. Oh, no, not at all. I should go. And I must work. Ah, the well. It feels off. Smells off too. Good day, sir. Good day, uh, madam. Mistress, Lucy Barrow, the alewife. Red McGraith, the banisher. Alewife, is it? I'd never have guessed from looking at you. And what does an alewife look like, Mr. Banisher? She's got you there. Can I ask, have you noticed anything strange lately? If you have, be sure to tell me. I'll be sure to tell you if I see anything normal. Strange is the flavour of the hour, the week, the month and the year. Yet folks still gossip. They're suspicious, aggressive, impatient. Perhaps they hanker for normality. I suppose it figures. Well, if you hear anything that strikes you as unusual, do let me know. I'll take my leave of you for now. And I of you. Red McCraith, sir. The Banisher, at your service. May I ask your name? Bachelor. Hugh Bachelor. I was the school teacher here in New Eden, in the times before. I do not need the services of a heretic today, and nor do the people of New Eden. He seems pleasant. Seen anything strange of late? Do you speak of the disease eating at the fabric of our fair community? We've sealed the well, closed homes and houses, and said our prayers. It has not worked. Apart from that, have you noticed anyone behaving strangely? I have to ask. I have seen the alewife, Mistress Barrow, lurking by the well, hands in her pockets, clutching at her herbals. And as I think of it, before his house burned down with his wife and brother in it, Caleb Watson and the alewife had a sharp exchange of words. Twere as if she'd cursed him. If there is a Harrow's witch, I'd start looking there. I'll steer you away from the idea that the alewife is a witch. I'll look into all the same. I must take my leave of you, sir. God keep you, but I shall not. Caleb Watson. We keep hearing that name. Let's pay him a visit. Lucy. Surprising. I'm curious to hear her take on all this. It's justice. Start anew. Shite on these people. They can't hurt us. But how could you make him kiss it again? Oh there. Are you all right, sir? We're closed. Uh, oh, now, out with you. Leave. Leave. I can tell from your sorry demeanor that you won't mind me asking you a couple of questions. I'm Red McCraith. I'm a banisher. I'm searching the area for evidence of witchcraft. And you, I can tell, are itching to help me. Show your shining shapes, goose peddler. No witches here. Only myself, Caleb Watson. The governor bade me make the rounds. Is anyone acting strange? Why would he ask you that? Everyone keeps secrets. And I have a talent for uncovering them. I ain't got no secrets. I ain't done no wrong. Search me house, if you don't believe me. Say for yourself. And when you're done, if you're any kind of man, you'll come back here, doff your cap, apologize, then shite off and never come back. If you're looking for someone acting strangely, I think you've found your man. Tell me a tale. What have you heard round about lately that might be of interest? Gossips for shite bags. Not being a shite bag, I don't gossip. 
I'll be leaving you alone for now. A man content with his own company is never alone. <laughs> you hear that? Good one, right? This is wrong. It's wrong, wrong, I tell you. Being courted by two brothers at once ours, rarely it? ends well. Should have not since the beginning. Don't go there. You know it's true. Ruth and Alexander Watson, the cobbler's wife and brother. Caleb Watson is out of his mind with grief. I think we need to talk to Caleb Watson. Fear not. Bugger off soon. They both will. You've done enough sniffing, hmm? Tired of the smell of your own ass. You said you had no secrets. That was a lie, am I right? Everyone has secrets. I can smell your secrets from here, mate. A pox on you. And a pox on your questions, too. You'll not take him head on. You must take your time. Outflank him. There's burned debris out back. I found bone in it. Where does it come from? You must have little business if you spend your time sifting through my rubbish. It came from the house. Probably. I read your letter to Ruth. It's clear you loved her. Were you telling the truth about Alexander's infidelity? My name is Caleb Watson. And before God and all present, I swear that the letter I wrote to Ruth was a load of shite. Lusting for his beloved Ruth, I set out to ruin Alexander's name because I'm a greedy little prick. You're frank. You don't sound like you regret it, though. No. The past the past. Dead and buried. My brother is but a lingering memory. It was terrible what happened to your wife and brother. It might have helped if you'd mentioned it. You must be grieving. Do you mind if I ask where they're buried? Shite on me, shite bag brother. And shite on you too. They're both deep in the dirt up at God's Acre. And I'll speak no more of it. What's going on at God's Acre, Caleb? Shite off with your God's Acre. And good riddance to both. God's Acre concerns you not. You need to tell me what happened here. Stop hiding. Nothing happened. Buried, buried all. Quiet, you. And you can shite off, taking your nothing happened with you. Whatever happened, it happened at God's Acre. Thoughts on Caleb? You first, young man. Talking to Caleb felt like talking to a group. I think in possession. Possession is plausible, but the clues are confusing. We jump to no conclusions. Instead, we gather proof. God's Acre? God's Acre. Here we are. Let us find the graves of Alexander and Ruth, and whatever got Caleb acting so strange. Here did lie Alexander Watson. Did K 
Caleb take their bodies? Someone did. And he's at the top of my list. Well, they made quite the mess. Perhaps the decoys may show us the way. Follow the path. Don't get too close. I'll try. Call on a vicious scourge that despises the living. In these lands, what a surprise indeed. Shrines now? With bones? It's like Lady Blackwood's boudoir around here. Shreds of a memory linger here. Oh, there, fella. You're nasty, aren't you? Nasty, yes. But also shoddy. It's very poor work. Are you sure we didn't miss anything? With a bit of luck, we'll find what we need. Something's concealed. What is this? It looks like a butchered version of the ritual of lesser palingenesis. The ritual of... that ritual? The one that brings someone back? That ritual? Yes, that ritual. Drop may hide the rain. As flesh unto verb, as verb unto heart, as heart unto flesh. Death's knot is unsevered, and I shall cut it. Caleb Watson invoked a ghost without a body for it to inhabit, so it took his. Caleb is no longer Caleb. Is he still in there too? He used pieces of his wife and also of his brother. Ruth, Alexander, Caleb could be any combination of them in there. Let's go find out which. been to God's Acre. Quite a tale it told us. You're not Caleb, are you? Or at least not entirely. Ah, can't fog you. Alexander Watson. Long tale short, Caleb tried to bring his dead wife back. And I live here now. So many questions. Where to even start? He was trying to bring his wife back. How did you end up in the mix? Caleb made a fine cobbler, a poor brother, a worse husband, and a truly terrible witch. The ritual went to shite, because, <laughs> of course it <he> did. <laughs> Do both of you share Caleb's body? Share? <laughs> No. 
This house of flesh is mine. But because I am a generous man, I allow my brother to live in the cellar. We were twins. I was the rotten half, they said. But who's the rotten half now? There's something else you should know, if you don't know it already. I'm not alone. I completed the ritual. My darling Ruth is in here too. Caleb was no saint, but this is hellish grim. Does he deserve it? Aye, he does. And it's not like I killed him. He's alive in here somewhere. Watching me ruin his name. He can hear me now. Destroying his reputation. As I had to hear him destroy mine when he painted me a fornicator. How oh, nice. He took our love. Ruth and mine, and killed it. Now our love's reborn, and he can do naught but sit and watch. Caleb was a cad. Shite on him. Let him suffer. You died trying to save Ruth from a bonding house. True. True. I'm sorry. There's an awful way to go, and... So young, too. You deserve better. We deserved better, and now we have it. And with it, Caleb gets to make amends. For he did nothing. He stood and watched us burn. <coughs> Caleb's name was ruined then. We're just putting the boot in. You used the ritual to bring Ruth's spirit into Caleb's body. Why? Love moves a soul to strange endeavours. We deserve a better life. I set myself to claiming it. You know you've failed, right? Look at yourself. Smell yourself. You can't live a life in that state. That's my never mind, not yours. If you don't like the smell, you can shite off. I'll not make our lives your business. I'd like to hear this from Ruth. May I please speak with her? No! We've carved ourselves out a little happiness at last. I'll not have you break it. Please, leave us alone. Give us this. We need to speak to her, one way or another. If he won't tell us anything, perhaps the house Ruth died in will. You're well placed to see what goes on around here. Help me out. Have you seen anything noteworthy? I've made a point of keeping people away, but I, I seek things and I take note. Lammy Haskell, any thoughts about him? The Haskell boy? What about him? He's weird. Talk with Caleb about nonsense. Both of them were full of shite. Tell me about folk here. Who stands out for you? What think you of them? What think I of they who shunned me? Gold, my, my black-mouthed brother. What think I of malicious fools for whom I had to die to be redeemed? I'd say a curse upon them. <laughs> but tis too late. The curse has already come. What's your take on the Governor? My brother gave him the Glad Hand Act, and the Governor lapped it up. Askell's opinion of himself is far too high. To win his favour, you need only prop him up. He dragged my name through the dirt. Shite on him, and his so-called eloquence. What use is a silver tongue when your heart is yellow? I'll be leaving you alone, for now. Alone? <laughs> Not really. Hush now. All is well. Nothing bad will ever come to us again. Ruth and Alexander are having an affair. 
in her husband's body. I can't find an angle with that. Isn't it just plain wrong? Something feels wrong. Something about Ruth. If we find the ghost tie, we can talk to her. The house that burned down. The roof fell in with them inside. There's a lot of debris. Red, I can't manifest anymore. The ghost wards feel far away from here. Just one keeps me from manifesting. Fancy knocking it down? Time must be nearby. Of course, Ruth's heart binds them like a bushel of rotting corn. This work shows real sensitivity. Caleb? Maybe. Not Alexander. I suspect we've just learnt a little about Ruth. You! What do you have there? Stop right there, you rank rump! Whatever you found, it ain't yours! You buried Ruth's heart in the ashes of the house that killed her. I find that odd. You, a ghost, went digging in the ashes of a dead woman's house. You're ill-positioned to call me odd. Don't think I haven't felt your presence before. Stow your tongue while I speak with Ruth. Ruth? Can you hear me? Can you speak? Pock off and die! I'm in charge here! No! Hush ye, Alexander. I'll speak. I'm Ruth. I hear you. I'm Antea Duarte. We're here to help. Oh, I'm glad. Please, end this nightmare. Help me. Go to hell in a bag of shite. We're fine. And you have not the right, you hear? You've not the right. Her heart! Give it back! Show yourself. No more does he silence me. We may speak. Help me, please. Who taught Caleb the resurrection ritual? To say it was taught would mean he'd learned it. He read it off a page. As a sorcerer, Caleb makes a fine cobbler. Thing about Caleb, he was a good listener. As he worked, clients would bend his ear. The Haskell boy, for one. As Caleb pinned the governor's shoes, young Lammy would talk magic. N nonsense, really. But Caleb was listening. Wait. Lammy Haskell gave Caleb the resurrection ritual. After Lammy mentioned the ritual, Caleb became obsessed with it. He begged. Lammy, in his misplaced generosity, gave it. Caleb was intent on dark work. Lammy furnished written instructions. Caleb 
Caleb's letter changed your life. How did it feel at the time? <sighs> it tore me in two. I loved Alexander. But I deserved to marry a man who would be true. Caleb seemed decent. I, I believed he loved me. I thought I'd married the better brother. But I'd married a liar. A liar and a devil. <sighs> and yet, not even he deserves this. No one deserves this. How did Caleb treat you? With adoration. I was an idol. Worshipped, yet unloved. He was the sculptor and I was the statue. Smiling down, unmoving from my pedestal with nothing to say. Now I'm sewn into a festering sack with the quivering remnants of my husband and the angry ghost of his dead brother. Please, let me out. Ruth, your husband Caleb's botched resurrection ritual brought you back, but allowed his brother Alexander to take you hostage. Once we deal with the Watson brothers, you shall be free to ascend. Do what you must. I'll suffer it if it leaves me free to go. No! We can stay. Please, Ruth, let us stay. Look at you. Your counterfeit, a sham of a thing. Your so-called life is no life at all. Caleb lied and stole your love. But when the time was right, you lied and stole his body. We're ending this nonsense now. Alexander, yours is no romantic fable. There is no moral to this tale. You're a hostage taker, nothing more. No, Caleb can go to hell, for he well deserves it. But Ruth and I are in love. Greedy men fight over a woman as if she were a thing. I'm done with that old story. Time to tell a better tale. Ruth is free to go. I shall have my rest now. Thank you. You have no shell, no ties, no purpose. Are they gone? Am I speaking with the cobbler, Caleb Watson? That you, Caleb? I, I, I think... Uh, yes, that's me. Or it, it was me, once. For my bastard brother was my hollow keeper. You're not entirely innocent, though. If you'll permit the unfortunate expression, there was more than one of you in it. My brother deserved damnation, and you gave it to him. I am an imperfect man, but, uh, but if you're considering the same for me, I'll not go without a fight. I too am an imperfect man. I have mercy and patience in limited supply. Let's not test those limits further, eh? Alexander loved Ruth like a man loves his hat. Love a woman like a thing and you do not love her at all. Ruth deserved better, in life and in death. That was something. Don't take it to heart. Their choices are not your business. Our choices are my business. And their consequences too. Our love story shall have a better ending. I shall be as I was before, as if I'd never gone away. I... I hear you. Good. Now, let's see what Lammy Haskell has to say about raising spirits from the dead. Governor. May I help you, Mr. McCraith? I have to admit, this is an unusual case. Yes, yes, but have you solved it? 
I believe so. But the culprit was not responsible for the plague. At least not directly. Have you found the witch or have you not? Someone here has been dabbling in some dark magic. I have the name. So? What are you waiting for? Don't you want to hear the name? I do not need to. The principle is what matters. Not exactly. The name is Lamentation Haskell. No, it can't be. My son is studious. Curious? Too curious at times, perhaps. But he does not have a bad bone in his heart. He showed Caleb Watts in a ritual. The cobbler used it and became possessed. Even if true, it would only mean my son was exposed to corruption. It happened before. Bring me proof, Banisher. Find the real source of evil. I'll get it. Mark me. I must find your son, Governor. Sooner rather than later. His interests take him hither and thither. If he isn't here, he must be working on the outskirts. He's been sprucing up one of the abandoned houses there. I ordered them emptied when the sickness hit. Yeah, take the gate key. Go there. See for yourself. You're wrong about him. You're wrong about my son. Needless to say that I count, of course, on your discretion. He was quick to condemn till it was his own son on the block. Who's he really protecting? We'll bring him the proof he wants. If the boy is guilty, his father may not be able to protect him. If wisps did they come back to bite, I'd almost feel sorry for these ones being caged. What are spirit snares doing out here? I believe we should come to terms with the fact that New Eden brims with demonologist craft. My mate, you here? This is locked from the inside. He was studying botany. Why botany? The incisions are clean. The precision of an expert. There's magic here, though faint. Arulu, mean anything to you? Not a thing. He mentioned an old mill. Seemed fascinated by the place. Nothing incriminating, yet. Remember what we found at Caleb Watson's? Maybe we're not looking in the right place. If I had something to hide, I might hide it in an abandoned mill. Derelict. Is he really inside? This would be nicely if I wanted to put my legs up. What hides here in the dark? Come out, come out. Damn. 
Deja vu. He tried his hand at several translations. So, what are you hiding in here, evil spawn? Glancing at the original writing, Lamy's work was poor. No wonder the ritual he spawned for Caleb from those botched words of power went wrong. More ghost wards. Someone was being extra careful. He doesn't speak well of his dad. Did he seek power? Was he hoping to step out of his father's shadow? If he did, he went the wrong way about it. We need to get to the top floor. I bet we'll find something. Here, I found something. Oh, crank. Great. Why did he feel like he needed so much protection? More magic muckery. He wished to disguise his presence, or perhaps to distract from it. Just a lift. Why is this mechanism so complex? That book again. The Agrippa. That's not good. Not good at all. What level of not good are we talking about exactly? This book promises eternal life. But the promise is a trap. Let's hope it hasn't been used. The lift should work now. We don't know what Lamy was up to, and the signs are not encouraging. You know, I could get to like it underground. The darkness, the gloom, the cool air. Really? No, not really. Not at all. So, here we are. I suppose now, we step into the void. <sighs> suppose we do. Rituals, void breach, general weirdness. Lamy can't be far. Wards, think you can fend for yourself? The wards work well enough. You didn't need to kill so many bots. Demonologists use necromancy. Maybe he thought he'd bring them back when he was done. Creepy hideout. The governor spawn likes a bit of drama.
This one's different. Looks like it died diseased. This is some dark sideways magic. It's forbidden. I've read it. Sometimes I worry about you. Ugh. What is this thing? Banisher rule number four. If it oozes, don't touch it. Another botched experiment? It may be native to the void. <laughs> so, you can see me. Aren't you full of surprises, young Master Husker? You may talk. A banisher ghost. Amazing. How on God's earth did you find me? Never mind that. Thank the Lord you did. Thought I was going to grow old in here. As hiding places go, the void is quite the choice. Yes, an amazing place. Or plane? World? The Araloo is not easily described. But it makes a fascinating study. Tell me, how did you get past the Guardian beneath the mill? Did you use a decoy? We fought it. Don't change the subject. You fought it? Of course you did! A good thing too. I was starting to think it was wise to me tricks. Oh, but I have so many questions. This isn't a social call, kid. And we're the ones with the questions. Oh. Oh. Of course. You see ghosts. You stroll the void as if it were your garden. You possess and share forbidden rituals. Who are you really? I'm Lammy Haskell, and I am a man of many sciences. I am in fact a true pursuer. That raises more questions than it answers. What are the pillars of the universe? Which principles underpin existence? As occultists, do we change the world or scratch upon its surface? Each discipline I embrace peels back a new layer of reality. I'm yet at the beginning and see where I already stand. Amazing, no? Are you a demonologist like your father? More or less. Less, more so. My father sees occultism through the eyeglass of his faith. But I know better. So, more so? If you don't share your father's faith, what do you believe? I believe in the afterlife. The proof is about us. And if the void embodies eternal despair, there must too be a place of hope. But where, I ask myself, where? Your father is convinced a witch poisoned his well. Caleb Watson was cursed by a ritual you gave him. I'd focus if I were you. We must counter the devil with knowledge of his tricks. That, my father always said, is the purest of God's work. Uh, I can imagine your father saying that. When I was ten, he gave me my initiation. Demonology, sir, as he would say. He saw me as his heir. Then, of a sudden, the books were forbidden. So I stole them, the very same books he'd forced upon me as a boy. I understand them where he does not. I did no wrong, apart from a little theft. From the looks of this place, you're knee-deep in research. What are you doing here, exactly? Searching for the origin of the Harrow's Plague, of course. And I have a theory on the subject. Of course you do. Go on, then. Now, at first, I believed the water poisoned, but my father sealed the well, and yet folk remained sick. They looked for witchcraft, a foolish, uneducated suspicion, yes, but with some truth concealed behind it. You see, the Araloo taints New Eden. Its influence leeches into the Harrows. The evidence is everywhere. Can you prove that? Where's your evidence? 
In New Eden, the threshold between our plane and this is thin. Even I, a novice, may reach the frontier and then go beyond. I also believe it happened before. Some years ago, New Eden was hit by another epidemic. Was it the same illness? I believe that first epidemic was caused by the porosity of the frontier between New Eden and the Aralu. Although, where theirs was an affliction of burning flesh, ours is a corruption of mind and spirit. And I believe I have found its source. There is a substance, a strange ooze. You may have noticed it. This, I believe, is the true source of the Harrow's poison. It carries a particular stink, on the scent of which I experience first confusion, then a loss of control over my limbs. What do you expect to find at the source of the ooze? To find a cure. The ooze seeps into our world, sickening us. I may be able to stop it. Unfortunately, I cannot reach the source. The Aralu is a formidable place. Tricky. A maze constantly evolving, changing, reshaping itself. The Isthmus, for example. I found an oozing crack in the ground. The terrain then remade itself, and I can get to it no longer. Perhaps we might be able to find a way through and take a look at that source. Would you? That would be splendid. Would you mind taking notes? We must talk of Caleb Watson. Why in the hell would you give him a resurrection ritual? Ruth's death hit poor Caleb hard. He was alone, and so I would often stop by his workshop. We talked. He took a keen interest in my studies and was a good listener. When he learned that she could possibly return, he had one question. How? Men bonding over bereavement and black magic. A pretty tale indeed. I should have proceeded with more caution. You shouldn't have proceeded at all. We have a witch hunt on our hands. You could face trial for this botched ritual. Yes, and I'm sorry. I found it in a copy of De Occulti Philosophia by Cornelius Agrippa von Nettesheim. A remarkable book. I've met my fair share of illustrious occultists, and none owned an authentic Agrippa. Much is lost in translation or altered in the printing. I doubt your copy is an exception. Of course! The power is in the words, and mine were wrong, so the power went awry. How very fascinating! Are you aware of what would happen if people learnt of your studies? Surely the acquisition of knowledge cannot be a sin. Do you remember Deborah? Miss Comenius. Yes, of course, I remember. Your father tasked us with an investigation. One way or the other we must return with the mystery solved. Ah. I think I understand what you're saying. I might be in a tiny little bit of, uh, danger. You've studied demonology. Did you do it alone? When my father forbade me to continue, I confess I disobeyed him in secret. Those big books were very boring, until they were forbidden. Suddenly I could not get enough of their secret knowledge. Funny, eh? More recently, a good friend of my father showed me that I had only been scratching at the surface. He taught you a secret. On his visits, I would assist him with the research for the writing of his books. When the curse fell, he fled with thick-skinned Newsmith and left all his work behind. I hope he made it. I'd surely like to one day show him the advances I've made upon his work. Let's go take a closer look at that ooze, then. And with that sorrow gone, I can leave. Do be careful. My home is your home. If you need anything, help yourself. The Aralu is not your home, Lamy. But thank you.
Uh, pardon my morbid enthusiasm, Mr. Stuarte, but could I ask you a few questions? What do you wish to know? Do you still need to eat? Do you feel hunger? Sorry, it's just, you're the first ghost I've met, uh, in person, as it were. I don't eat. Not in the way you do. I feel hunger. Again, not in the way you do. Fascinating. And can you touch things, smell them? Are colours the same as you remember them? My senses are different. It's difficult to describe how. I can see, sometimes touch. I cannot smell. Red tells me this is a blessing. How do you manifest in this plane? Do you feel bound or are you here by choice? It feels as if I were clinging to a rope, high above the abyss. Even if I wished to let go, I could not bring myself to do it. I see. What about your banisher skills? Can you use them? Do the accoutrements of your craft still work? As a ghost, do they not harm you? The marks on my hands and the rings on my fingers aren't actually there. They have no more effect on me than a memory. Can you talk to any ghost you wish? No. I sense traces of their presence. To talk to them, I must still do the work. And yet here I am, talking to you. How marvelous. The dead are rarely as articulate, nor are they accommodating. In fact, they're often quite rude. And there, we should get going. So, the pious governor's unassuming son is our evil Harrow's witch. I was as earnest as he. Ah, the rank enthusiasm of youth. It's sickening, really. I don't know that I buy Lamy's hair of the dog theory, but I feel strange, and I suspect the ooze. No, no. Oh, God. I need a wee bit of help here. Oozes through the breach, separates like a festering wound. How delightful. Let's see what lies on the other side. Underground, looks like. Wonderful. Who goes there? Is that a ghost? I don't know. But I don't think we're alone. What might you be, then? Is that a house from the Harrows? We may be below the well. No wonder they all got sick. The cries of the innocent have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. Look up. The ooze, uh, oozed through the very stone. Gibbs's land was barren. He was struggling for money. And of all of them, just this one house fell down. Maybe it was personal. Was the Gibbs's house targeted by the ooze? Obviously. Look around you. Mr. and Mrs. Gibbs, have you read my paper? I read it, aye. And then I washed my hands and prayed for grace. You claim to prove that there is no curse. Well, 
A witch would say that, wouldn't she? Wherever people gather to live, disease takes hold, and I believe... What are you doing? Your evil lies shall be destroyed. We know who you are, and you shall be judged. Witch! They were determined to do for her. She built a case for her rationality, and they tore it apart. You'll get it next time. I'm right here. I can help. Someone didn't want to stay dead. Clemency Gibbs blamed the epidemic on a witch. Come from New Eden time with the governor. That's not what the woman they accused was saying. The Gibbs were not at home to rational explanations. This is how they kill their fear. This is how I die. Don't step in that. I mean it. Find a way around then. This whole country is rotten to the core. And you're just now reaching this conclusion? If I wanted your opinion, I'd give it to you. Perhaps if you gave me the space to have one, then we'd both be better off. Someone came through here, someone real, not just a shadow. Whatever it was, it looks like the ooze got him. What do you think, Antea? You wanted the space to have your own opinion. I'm giving it to you. This must be Antipas Gibbs. Hell of a fall to live through. Now join in any time, Antea. What do you think I'm doing? God's land. How could we let a witch come to our community? Instructing our children, no less. Tis no surprise. New Eden brims over with backsliders. The governor, chief amongst them. Aye. Many had to sicken and die for him to act. But the deed is not yet done. We must fight the Lord's good fight and cast the devil out for good. Many want to try the witch, aye. And many want to see her dead. Those things came from the ooze. They're like those oriental shapeshifters we fought in Bremen. Or back liquefy. This is some. The Gibbs were so angry. Pure entitled bigotry. Maybe they were affected by the ooze. I mean, we've been snapping at each other since we got here. Something's toying with us. I think they made the ooze. I don't think the ooze made them. I sense the vivid echo of a ghost's memory. The devil still breathes to her mouth. We are cursed, and you are stalling. Clemency, Antipas, please. The woman has been jailed. As per custom, she will face trial, and justice will be brought to this community. Coming from a magic user himself. 
But can you or your demonologist discernment really be trusted? How dare you insinuate such blasphemy? I'm a man of faith. Do what God commands of you. Governor, we ask for safety. If we do not get it, there will be consequences. The governor used Urim and Thummim, and that made his flock suspicious. Divination stones. He must have thrown them down the well when he sealed it. Why now? Hiding the evidence, perhaps, of his role in the witch trial, they connected him to the demonology he used to reinforce his authority. That echo proves that things were getting out of hand. For his son's safety and his own, Haskell must have feared the suspicious mob. Speak, so you listen. myself today. What the hell just came out of that shadow? It's working. Keep at it. Ready and waiting.
I never wanted this. I hate the very thing I've become. Enough. Can we please get out of here? That was awful. This trial. It was as if Deborah wanted us to face what she had faced. But all I feel is beaten. I feel powerless. I were always one move behind. Justice miscarried here. Of course. That's it. I know what that was. Such spectre of injustice has a name. The mythical infamy. I've only read about them. They're so rare, most think them a myth. Ignorance caused this. A raging epidemic drove them out of their minds. Unable to look within. They pointed the finger. And so a terrible ghost was born, and sickness piled on sickness. Haskell has so much to answer for. That down there, it was... I was tense. I was impatient. Me too. That infamy really got to us. Years of anger coursed through me. Yet now I can't even remember why. Me neither. This is what an infamy does. It's over now. We're here. I said something to hurt you. I'm sorry. I forgive you. And I hope that you forgive me too. How refreshing it is to the soul to be at once. Thus, one thing above all else, my friends, is true. The wicked are at odds with themselves. Oh, good. His latest sermon. We haven't missed it.
The Lord's promise of salvation from hell pleases them. The Lord's salvation from misery and sin here on earth does not. This doesn't look like salvation from misery and sin. The wicked pray for deliverance from the fires of hell while piling the kindling high. They proclaim their love for their Lord, yet in his name they serve themselves. Their self-regard crumbles in the light of their hateful iniquities. So, so true. Mr. McCraith. My friend, I'm so glad you agree. Now the wicked man never questions- I have your answers. What? Yes, good. Perhaps we should discuss this privately, if you'll give me just a moment. It's quite the story. You might not wish to hear it. Neither may the good people hear. Please, this is not the time. We want to hear the story. Let the Banisher speak. Tell them, Red. Tell them good. Aye. There's a story that starts with a question. A question for you, Governor. And maybe for all the good people of New Eden. If I give you a witch, will you do what you did to Deborah Comenius? Comenius, say you? The school teacher walked with the devil and paid the appropriate price. That's the beginning of the history and also its end. Is it, though? Now, I've learned much about Deborah Comenius and what happened to her, and it tells a very different tale. And what story, pray you, does it tell? It tells the story of a woman, a teacher, living peaceably among friends until there came a plague. In fear, the good people went to their governor. The devil walks among us, they said, and you must save us or we will find someone who will. This governor knew he could not save them, but he could give them a witch. She would confess or she would be judged. Deborah Comenius was a witch, Mr. McCraith. She was the devil's tool, and worse, much worse. The trial was not fair. You had no proof, and you knew it. Credible witnesses gave believable testimony, sir. Witnesses like Gibbs, who pressured you into a guilty verdict to avoid being suspected of witchcraft yourself. There was pressure, I'll not deny it. But I did what I did to protect the colony. It was a difficult time. The picture of yourself that you hold in your mind is that of a great occultist. To repel the devil, the wise and fearless man must learn the black spy's tricks. Do you then consider yourself a true demonologist? In order that a war be just, three things are necessary. Firstly, the authority of the sovereign. Secondly, a just cause. Thirdly, a rightful intention. Aye, the Summa Theologiae of St. Thomas Aquinas, a classic quote from which you have conveniently omitted an important detail, to wit, a just cause is required, namely that those who are attacked should be attacked because they deserve it on account of some fault. Have you ever wondered what lies beyond the veil, past the hem, beyond the invisible? Have you ever heard of the Aralu? What gibberish is this? No? Your good friend Etienne Roulet did not, it seems, they knew worthy of his secrets. <laughs> yeah, never mind. You're a pompous coward. 
fearful of anyone different, as human as that is. There must be a man to judge, or there is no order. A man to make the judgment, and a man to enforce it. Of all people, you know this. I live and let live. I choose only for the dead. I choose for the living. These people are sinners, sir, and must be led back to the light. This is my mandate, my duty. What do you really want, Governor? I wish only to serve. I am the trusted servant of the good people of New Eden. Without me, they're lost. Without them, you would be lost. Yes. Maybe I do need them. A very human of me. But these people undoubtedly need me, Mr. McCraith. And there is no one else. Admit it. You toy with magic. You don't understand. You, sir, are jealous. I, sir, am tired. I've done my job, fulfilled my contract, I've found the source of the curse. The poison below the well is no more. No thanks to you! Aha! Poison it was, then! The weapon of the wicked, to weaken the people's will. What was it? Belladonna? Hemlock? Foxglove? Betrayal! Truth unspoken, secrets and lies, wrongs, basically, your wrongs. The wrongs you visited upon Deborah Comenius, the wrongs that led to her death. She died at the hand of the body politic. She died at all our hands. Most of all, she died at her own. She died because she would not submit. Twas not my plan to kill her, stupid, stubborn woman. Why did she not confess? I would have granted clemency. I would have shown her mercy. You had the power to stop the madness. But instead, you chose to let it run all the way to its barbaric conclusion. You brought the curse down on New Eden. Then you called we banishers in to fix your mistake. You boast of your knowledge of demons and spirits, but in truth, you master nothing. You're a peacock. All show and no meat. I'm not here today to bring justice. But this man, your governor, brought death. <laughs> he deserves blaming. And shame on me if I don't do it. <laughs> it's best. <No. sighs> Friends, have I ever not served the interests of our community? Have I not protected you? Have I not loved you? For good! Far from it. Then, who will protect us? I will. While 
Mr. McCraith fights the curse of New Eden. I will protect the people of the Harrows. Or at least, I'll try. Now let's all return to our homes and pray for forgiveness. And, uh, the strength to bear the consequences of our actions. Your fee. One of the many debts my father left me. You'd best put your own debts first, young Master Haskell. Don't I know it? I hate this place. Rest up, then please, let's get out of here. You're angry. I can tell. Of course you can. Aren't you angry? I'm more... disgusted. This region is doomed. I know it in my bones. There's no shortage of suffering around here. Ask or sell to that when he ordered Deborah's execution. I know that we're together, and it makes us strong, but I'm still weary. Don't lose yourself. You've done far more than I could ever have asked. I'll do what it takes, and gladly. You need not ask it. The closer we get to my body, to the truth about what happened here, the stronger I feel. My senses rise. It's as if I can taste the silence, smell the scent of wood smoke, feel the warmth of your body, feel Deborah's wrath. I feel it as if it were a part of me. I understand her anger. I feel her rage and can't help but relate to it. But that anger of mine, that fear, I thought when I left home, I'd left them behind. You thought by becoming a banisher, you'd overcome your anger and fear. I thought at least I'd gain control. I'm a big bad banisher. I fear no ghost. I understand now that this control was but a mere illusion. So much so that the sister I thought was gone for good seems to be winding her way back to me. Your sister, Ayomi Day, wasn't it? No. As a child, before I left Cuba, I had a friend. I chose to call her my sister. That night, the night I died, I dreamed of her. I dreamed of Calendre. Are you sure it was a dream? Is that why you left the schoolhouse without me? Yes. It must have been a dream. She wasn't there. I mean, how could she have been there? But I heard her voice. I'd swear on it. How could that be? The nightmare, perhaps? I don't think so. The nightmare felt close. This felt like it came from further away, as if from a different realm of being altogether. What did you hear her say? I don't know. I don't remember. I think she said we were family, never to be divided. She's after my job. She can't have it. I'm your family now. Nothing's tearing us apart. No, not even death. Thank you 
for being the kindest soul I've ever met. Thank you for being the bravest. Ceridian? Uh, what do you mean, Ceridian? War! Ceridian, what's wrong? Come, hurry, I need you on the island. I don't think she can hear us. We need to go back to the swamps. Was that really Ceridian? How did she pull that trick? I think maybe she used the invisible to speak to us through the crow. Pity it doesn't work both ways. Imagine having a conversation with someone far away. Can you feel it? I have goosebumps. The veil is tearing at the seam. Crows, they flock to that great tree up there. The Banishers are here. Already? How unfortunate. You called us. Did I? I thought I had more time. In the end, it runs out for all of us. As I depart this old carcass, I leave no burning heart behind. Go or stay. To prevail, you must first set your heart at peace. When at last you face the nightmare, you must both be clear on what you want. You must. What do you mean? It is not for me to give you answers, only to prepare you for what awaits. Then we can all go to sleep. Seeker doesn't hate you, Rory. She's just not used to being trusted. Protect her for me. Too late, old moss head, as ever. Standing by.
Old Moss Head is no more. They'll never drink from your skull now, will they? Another ancient promise broken. now. You're all I ever had and all I'll ever have. <laughs> Can I set the world on fire now? I just want to see it burn. A pity. Farewell, then. She took me in when my father, when no one else wanted me. She taught me to stand up straight. Leave her be. For now. Hmm. I am tired of all this death. Want to talk about it? I will do. become of Seeker now. She'll try to make sense of her pain. Or perhaps she'll sit with it a while. If she has regrets, she must tame them. Grief knows no rule book. When I returned from the war, I walked the wet streets of London for a long time. All I could feel was my heart digging a hole deep inside my chest. After what I had seen, I had done. I just wanted the pain to stop. I wanted oblivion. Your ghosts were killing you. They almost pushed you to insanity. But you pulled through. I let myself be drowned. You're the one who pulled me out. Poetic, if melancholic. What's going on, Red? I'm losing my grip. Sliding away, slipping through my own fingers. I've come so far. I don't want to go back. Red Rory McGraith, blood-soaked and vicious. Long's in the past. I fear his return. For you to live. I swore to reap the essence of the living. And if I succeed, I must live with my sins. If I fail, I must show them my guilt and I don't know that I can carry the weight. Are we sure about what we are doing? Are you sure this is what you want? We 
made an agreement? Are you having second thoughts? I don't know. Maybe. Ceridian's death has changed things for you. Yeah. She had power, purpose. She had love, and she still chose to leave. Maybe she's right. Should we reconsider? It may not be too late to change our minds. But you must promise me, Red, whatever we decide, we stick to it. We cannot change our minds again. I swear it, my love. This is it. So, we ready ourselves for your leaving. Is it worse to lose your faith in your fathers than it is to lose faith in yourself? Those in the harrows who lived would be wise to look inwards, to reflect, and then to pay penance. But none carry a greater burden than young Lamentation Haskell. How will he guide the faltering faithful, when he has so little faith in himself? Idea. I miss you. There's a voice again. Ignore it. Push on. I'm talking to you, little sister. Sister... What are you telling me? I'm telling you it's dangerous, and we need to move on. My father would tell me stories. In the heart of the mountains lived a mystical race who desired only peace. <laughs> I can hear him now. Uh, these mystics, he said, they valued life and used gold only for their mausoleums. All creatures were accepted among them, except the men who were born to stay away. Because they were bellicose and greedy. Let me guess, they went anyway. Aye, uh, being bellicose, they did. And being greedy, they went after the gold. Their mausoleums desecrated, the mystics cursed the humans and hid themselves away. And they remind me of Ceridian. To arrest her. Snow. Have we climbed higher or has the weather gotten colder? The nightmare is at work. She's likely using the weather in New Eden to further isolate its people. Then once the curse is lifted, the snow will disappear. I think so. You've excelled of late. And you haven't crowed about it once. You had your doubts, did you? Don't get cocky. There's always more to learn. Key thing about a scourge? A scourge is made of many spectres merged. Not always. A harvester, for example, is a scourge born of a single spectre. A scourge will always seek a new physical body, often made of different materials. Very poor. Perhaps you'd prefer an easier question? On the nature of a ghost, perhaps? 
ghost of unfinished business. And apparently that includes asking questions. You may not know much, but you have the cheek. I'll give you that. I hope it's enough. Trouble ahead. Spectres are attacking the fort. Seek no thrill! Hold fire! That fellow's not dead! That's all I said, hold your fire! <laughs> Putting up a fight then! Ready and waiting. Hold there. None in, none out. Not living nor dead. Name's Red McCraith. I'm obviously a banisher. Open the door there. I've business within. Your business is, if you'll excuse my articulating the evidence, not my business. I have my orders. You can't come in. I hear you, friend. What's your name? My name's Andrew White. You seem a pleasant fellow. I like a Scot, me, but standing here, I'm on duty. And when I'm on duty, I'm not your friend. Uh, listen, mate. Folk in here have problems enough, and I can't be disobeying orders. Either Priest or Pennington would have my guts, and I fancy neither. Who is this Priest? May I speak with him? Him is a her. Helen Priest ain't here. She's on an excursion to the outpost, searching for supplies. Now, you want to lend a hand? Mrs. Priest and her party are overdue. You can't miss the outpost. It looks out across the valley. If you could find her, make sure she doesn't die, you'd surely gain her favor. And favor, as they say, opens doors. Get in a fight and find your boss and dig her out of whatever hole she's in. All right. I can do that. They have spectre troubles. Let's first clear the nearby nest to relieve the fort, then deal with the missing. How holds the fort? How holds the fort? Precariously, that's how. Our strength dwindles, and we'll soon run out of powder. Priest took Williams and that other fella, and off they went, scavenging for supplies. They've not yet returned. It's dangerous out there. The scavenger may easily become the carrion. Heard any good scuttle lately? The dead are coming, and you want to gossip. <laughs> I admire your sang Freud, and that's the Lord's truth, but now, sir, is not the time. Right. I'll likely be back. Find our friends, Banisher. Or put them to rest. I'll try. As soon as I take care of the Spectre's nest, I'll go looking for the outpost. Death knocks at their gates. No wonder they won't open. They don't have a choice. Another attack may overrun them. The nest might be near. There's a trail to follow in the snow. My bolt is shot! Behind you!
A timely arrival. You'll be Haskell's banishers. Thank you. Thank you both. You can see me. Clear as day. Just as I can see. This is my husband. I am Helen Priest. And Thea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McGraith. It is rare that the living can see the lingering dead. All I know is one day I woke after seven long years of grief, and my Sebastian was back. It was as if my prayers had at last been answered. That was enough for me. In times of danger, I am duty-bound to protect the woman I love. You understand? Seven years. Why come back now? It did not feel like seven years. Suddenly, I felt her pain calling to me. Divine intervention or otherwise, all that matters is that my dear Sebastian is back. Now, when I need him most. Andrew White sent us. He thought you might be in trouble. Plainly, you needed your guardian angel. We needed more than one. Thanks to you, we'll resupply the camp. Matthews and Williams did not die in vain. This was a risky expedition. But Helen had no choice. If the survivors were to rely on Pennington alone, the fort would have already fallen. I suspect that's so. Sometimes difficult choices must be made. That's courage. All the courage in the world will be worthless if those in command won't match it. Pennington did this while monsters relentless besieged the fort. But make no mistake, these men's deaths are on the captain's conscience. If he has one. How so? Seven years ago, a plague came to New Eden. Pennington quarantined the sick in the mines, walled them up. They were dark times. Hard times. None knew what the morrow would bring. We all lost much. Too much. As second in command, Sebastian volunteered to stay. Walled in with the others, he held out the longest. He died a hero. And now the Forsaken are rising. They demand revenge. Who would blame them? I watched them die. Soldiers and miners, sick and hungry, begging for help they knew would never come. Captain Pennington has much blood on his hands. I'm sorry. You've been through a lot. We have. We are, and will persist till we prevail. We should get back to the fort. We will escort you. I'm afraid I locked us in when I broke the latch. If there's a way out, we'll find it. Is he as pie? Ah, but you can't cook. Impressive. You banishers are quite something. A banisher marched with my father's infantry. Good for morale, he said. Soldiers usually carry their ghosts with them. War is good for our business. I take it that's how you met. I know a soldier when I see him fight. I never worked for the army, but something like that. We'll come back for you, my friend. My sympathy. How low has Pennington brought us? If you didn't like him, why did you follow him? I followed his reputation, but he's no longer the same man. What would you do in his place? I'm doing it. He sits behind his walls waiting for them to fall, and I'm out here fighting to live. We're fighting for our lives. The captain is in the way. 
These internal conflicts are a risk for the stability of the fort. A necessary risk for the survival of all. But I agree. This must end. You may leave the crates. I'll send someone back for them. Yeah, the path should be quiet. We cleared the area of the Spectre's Nest. Well, that's a relief. Follow me. White! Open the gates! Priest! What are you lot waiting for? Open the gates! Go talk to Pennington. Make him understand, if you can. Where can I find him? He hides in his office. You'll find him there. Where are the others? Williams and the other chap? And God have mercy on their souls. Captain Bennington. No time, no way out, no hope, no way in. No time, no time at all. Captain Bennington, sir. Mr. McRaith, you live. There's work to be done. Work? You had work, a mission. To bring one last glimmer of hope, to gladden our hearts before the pit takes us all. You secretive bastards haven't helped. The job is done. There's no more hope and little enough time. All that remains is the pit. Welcome to the last stand, McGrath. Welcome to the end. I wouldn't surrender just yet, Captain. I found Helen Priest. We brought supplies. A waste of effort on both accounts. Hardly. We saved a life. Resupplied, you may save more. For the sake of what? For the sake of days? A week, perhaps? You save no one. You prolong the terror. The dead will come. Our throats will feel their bony fingers soon enough. The end is inevitable. It is if you will not act. You're the officer. Take command. Surely you can't intend to do nothing. You sound like Priest. She has changed. Her return to Fort Jericho has made her impulsive, irrational, quarrelsome. I believe she did not fully grieve her husband's loss. Returning to the scene has, it seems, reopened the wound. It festers. She'll join the lieutenant soon enough. But now the fences crumble at the last. The pit shall take us all. How do things stand, Captain, as you see them? Uh, little has changed. The dead flood from the mines. We shoot them down and gain respite. Soon, the onslaught begins anew. The clock of our extinction ticks on towards the hour. We may no more defeat the dead than we may vanquish the ocean waves. Folk have little enough hope. And you're leading them further into the darkness. I've heard the whispers, the murmurs, the plotting from the shadows. We hold till the last. We resist till retribution rises from the pit and drags us all to hell. Well, that's something worth waiting for. I fail to see the appeal of this slow agony. How unfortunate. Because thanks to you, 
and the time you bought us, the agony will be all the slower. Fair to say your tactical retreat from New Eden Town has not served you. The town was doomed to fall to the curse. We disagreed on everything. There was nothing left to do but leave. We did not know there'd be no escape. No Smith gathered the board and the governor let the affair flock to him. We never agreed on anything in the first place. The governor is no more. His son takes charge. They rebuild as best they can. <laughs> Little Lammy Haskell. Truly. Well, better him than his father. May the vacuous peacock rest in peace. I crossed paths with the new Smith party. Thick skin did not make it. Shame. She had a proper head on her shoulders. Without her, the band will suffer. As the commanding officer, you must know all the local lumps and bumps. The lumps and bumps can smooth themselves. I have other priorities. Why did you come to New Eden, Captain? Why here? Far from the many wars we fight, you mean? I'd shot enough Frenchmen and more than enough Indians. Did no one come with you? Keep to your business, son, not mine. It's just, there's a portrait hanging on the wall. A family. I had a wife and daughter once. Once. I'll not entertain you with their story. Tell me more about yourself and your career. I did my duty and had the fortune to return alive. That's all. We who are intimate with war tell no tales. I thought that too. I was wrong. Silence allowed my ghosts to prosper. It is good to tell our stories. If ever I do tell, I'll not be telling you, son. Permission to take my leave, Captain. And if I refuse it? Are you trying to recruit me, Captain? Do you really think I'd take the King's shilling? <laughs> if I were to offer enough shillings, I'm sure of it. I need no new lieutenants. But if you wish, you may stay. This key unlocks the unused watchtower. You'll build it while you're here. On the one hand, a captain beaten by the world. On the other, his rival, haunted and mutinous. In a fort besieged by vengeful spectres. Behind all the shit, there's something else. Something darker. Could be worse. Could be underground. May I have a word? Helen, something wrong? Apologies for disturbing your rest. I'm afraid it can't wait. What did you think of the captain? I saw an officer alone. A proud man turned to stone, perhaps, by years of war. I saw a broken man. I did not see the tyrant you described. Inaction is tyranny. He will not act, but nor will he get the hell out of the way. I do not disagree, but the captain needs help. I too was a soldier, broken and haunted. 
With Antea's help, I recovered. Pennington may need the same. Leave Pennington to me. The good folk of the fort need your help. You are banishers. The dead, you'll have noticed, hammer at the gates. I would like you to go into the mines and find out what enrages them so. I would like you to do what the captain will not. And while we deal with the hordes of angry spectres, what shall you be doing? When the mines are purged, I'll oust Pennington. Where do we go? There is a second tunnel into the mines. The entryway was walled shut during the quarantine. Getting there will not be easy, but the barricade should fall without too much difficulty. After that, who knows? Underground again. Wonderful. If it soothes you, I too am taking a significant risk. The captain has a penchant for locking people up and leaving them to rot. Some years ago in New Eden Town, the captain locked up an innocent woman. A fate I wish to avoid. Pennington the Jailer. Do you speak of Deborah? What did he do? I was away from New Eden Town at the time. Rumours said she was a witch, I later heard. And so too did the captain. The court agreed. Who knows what urges drove the captain then? He is a secretive man, and always has been. How goes it with Sebastian? I'm not sure. I had never let go of my grief. I was bereft, empty. His absence gave me substance. I clung to it, useless really. My husband died in the dark with nothing but my handkerchief to soothe his last moments. And now, he's back. If each worthwhile thing in life is to be lived and then when it is gone, to be grieved. Then what now? I have to believe our love is enough. Love is hard work. We are bound to grieve all the different versions of ourselves. And theirs. I try to hold him and cannot. It taunts me. It was almost easier when he was gone. All things are fleeting. Gaze upon the ghost you love and you can't deny it. Bitter though the thought may be. Yes, tis a blessing and a curse. Yet against all reason, we persist. Let us make the most of time remaining. Is it your belief that Pennington's quarantine lies at the heart of the problem here? That this is why the dead rage so? What else? He walled them in. Miners, nurses, soldiers, the healthy or the sick, he buried them all. And then he lied about it. I'll brook his callous cowardice no more. Much goes on around here, and you seem to know about all of it. I try, and I could do something about it if the captain was out of the way. What brought you to New Eden? I came with Sebastian, willingly, mind you. My father was a soldier. I knew there'd be travel. Sebastian courted me for three years. I swore when we married I'd follow him to the end of the earth. And here we are. How's morale about the fort? The fort has known better days. Not many, mind. It's always been miserable. Folk deserve better. They fought so hard and lost so much. The captain must show them a future. We should go. Then it's agreed. When you're ready, you'll investigate the mines. Take the hoist to the waterfall, near the outpost you first found me. From there, it is not far to the tunnel. Keep your wits and all your luck about you. An innocent woman, jail. I mean, as wolf belts go, it's pretty. It's barbaric. More than An officer must be just, or else it all unravels. Helen is right. The truth lies down there, somewhere. I suspect Deborah is at it again.
Circumstances aside, this is quite romantic. Swarming hordes of spectres aren't to your liking. They are if I'm with you. Not a fan of this breeze, mind. Not as romantic as you'd thought, eh? Maybe now's the time to ask you to marry me. Try it, and I'll cut the rope. What a beautiful view. Every morning I wake to a better one. You try to tell me, lady. I'll warn you. It should definitely work. No rules. Just how I like it. Vanishes. I see you found your way. Sebastian, what are you doing here? Difficult though it be to walk these dark tunnels, I'll guide you as best I can. You sure you want to come? You don't have to. I must. For Helen. What shall we find down there? The rage of the Forsaken. They trusted him. He betrayed them. He abandoned them. I doubt they can be placated. Pennington did a great and terrible thing. Your death must feel like an outrage. I am a soldier. I took the shilling. Death is part of the bargain. One dies, so many may live. I served the sick and the dying. When my turn came, I was ready. But now, in the fort, there is no noble sacrifice. One dies, so all may also die. Tell us a little more about Helen. Now, I'm not sure what more I could tell you. My wife is a strong woman. What you see is what you get. Every day I feel blessed to have a partner and best friend by my side. I had never expected her. When she came into my life, I came home to myself. It made me want to be a better man. Oh, I know the feeling. She gave me a handkerchief. I died clutching it. A symbol of our love. She was and is ever in my thoughts. She is my world, now until the end. We must press on. Stay close. Whenever you're ready. Ah. Oh. Fantastic. I think you can get down from here. Everything all right? Let's just get this over with. Pennington ordered the barricades fast. I barely had time to bid Helen farewell. That must have been hard. A soldier is called to sacrifice. The spirits of these soldiers were angry. Soldiers weren't spared. Those not taken by sickness or thirst died of despair. Which one took you? Despair. Mostly. These tunnels go surprisingly deep. In its heyday, it was quite the operation. You see this lift? It goes all the way down. Did the miners abandon their work when sickness hit? They worked till they could work no more. I sense the fragment of a ghost's voice. They told Grey the tunnels were hellish hot. But Wilson says he can't do much about it. Keep feeding the furnace, says he, if you want your meagre pay. <laughs> that sounds nasty. You all right? Wouldn't fancy working here with the furnaces running. The work men did here was meant to make New Eden rich. 
Nice of you to join us, Sebastian. Care to explain what the hell we just heard? What now? We push past the blockade. Follow me, please. Are they expecting to face a regiment? In a way. We knew the dying would try to fight. We had to keep them from infecting the rest. Charming. Can't blame a man for wanting to make a This miner was shot. Was there a mutiny? There was. We failed. Why did you not mention this before? My heartfelt apologies. I suppose the memory was just too painful. Lay down your weapon, Prospector, and stand away. I'll not say it twice. Hear me! I'm not your foe! Obey the order! Put the pickaxe down! Your uniform won't protect your son! Your officer will bury us all! He'll bury us all! He'll bury us all. He meaning Pennington, right? Who else? People were angry, and for good reason. Rebel camp. All right, Sebastian, fess up. What's going on? What matters is that Pennington must pay. There is nothing else. Weapons, sabotage plans? Just how bad was the revolt? Not as bad as Pennington burying us all alive. That's no answer. Sebastian Priest, in the mine you were to tend to the sick. Instead, you afflicted them. What? No. This is a, a heinous lie. I gave my life for it. You turned into a tiger until revolt emerged among the exhausted survivors. They, they, they must have gone mad down in the dark. Their, their rage found a target in me, the, the captain's man. I died innocent. I, I died a hero. You're a murdering coward. Blame Pennington all you want. We know it is a lie. I didn't. I, I never did that. It's not me. It's all a lie! I love Helen with all my heart. Pennington must pay. You must make Pennington pay for his crimes! You'll not get away with this, Sebastian. Come back here, you coward! I don't think he's coming back. I can't believe Sebastian lied to us all. To Helen. Is this why the creature is angry? I would be. Perhaps. Sebastian wants Pennington to be punished at all costs, and I'm not sure why. Officially can, though. Miners. Left to die in sickness and starvation. Helen was right. This was an atrocity. But she blamed the wrong man. I love doing that. The sight of them makes me wonder if their resistance was even worth it in the end. You're standing amidst their bodies with nothing but silence for your answer. What do you think?
These must be Sebastian's remains. Curious. The priest said he was the last to die. Said he shot himself when hope ran out. But someone stove this fella's head in with a pike. This was no romantic suicide. This was bloody murder. Plus, there's no ghost tie. And look, the mark from before. No ghost tie. So why did he not pale and become a spectre like the rest? Sebastian told Helen a story. His prominent chest wound was part of it, but it's a fiction. He spun her a lie. I'm starting to doubt the lieutenant's ghost. I think it's an effigy of Sebastian sent to get close to Helen, maybe even to Pennington. Not a spectre, something more elaborate. But what and why? Sebastian is a doll, stuffed with stolen memory, made by whatever lurks down here. Helen relies on her husband. The truth might ruin her. Whatever about Helen. First we need to find the doll maker. Scalp stand here, and his presence gives it life. Another ghost rallying the wrath of lesser spectres to its cause. This is about the agony of Deborah Comenius. Aye, and the guilt of the people of New Eden. And the captain will 
taste his own medicine. You're Deborah, right? Pennington had you arrested and clapped you in chains. A broken pub, locked away, forgotten. Down in the dark, lift the heavy chains from her, free me. If we do, will you talk with us? It's over. Go in peace. No peace. No pardon. Naught but darkness and decay. No. All this must stop and you must stop it. Dark decay and the maddest words of the worst of men. Whose words? Pennington's? The worst of men. Oh. When the maddening silence becomes the darkest night, the faintest voice is welcome as the dawn. Deborah. Fair enough. 
enough minds for a lifetime. Can we go now? What was that thing? A puppeteer. Every dead thing we've met was controlled by its anguish. Sebastian especially. The miners were wronged, but Pennington's dereliction of Deborah is what caused all this. So what now? Pennington had Deborah locked up screaming. When she was dead, he ignored her. He's a disgrace. But Helen Priest is enthralled to a trickster spirit. She can't be trusted either. But eventually, we'll get to take sides. What is it? The rush after the fight. It'll pass. It's Sebastian, isn't it? You know I'm me, right? That I'm no puppet. Aye. Do you, though? Aye. My head may say different, but I know it in my heart. Is it is justice. Justice long denied. Wait! Thought you'd been killed in the mines. Doom blow lie dead in the mines. Neither one more word, nor a move from you. The mines are cleansed of their madness. Which is more than I can say for this room. You banished the thing in the pit. Truly. It's gone. Aye. The puppeteer is no more. The siege is lifted. Get excited. You're still up to your neck in shite. You've still to answer for what you did, and what you did not. I do not answer to civilians, nor to mutineers. You will answer to the dead. Once a woman in chains cried out and you did not listen. This is why you're cursed. Confess. Your future, and the future of many, depends on it. I'll confess there is no future. I'll confess I led us here to make our final stand. And we still stand. To that I'll confess, and claim the credit. We fall one by one. Then we weep, we rage, but we stay loyal and true. Even the widows must stay true. In fear you dither while folk die. Soldiers will not long stay loyal to a coward. I do not fear a future already written. The die is cast. I dither not. I hold. I hold and watch the end unfold. There's more to this. An older a deeper fear. You may be to blame for the tragedy in the mines, Pennington, or you may not. But the puppeteer wanted you dead. Some years back, you accused a local woman of witchcraft. You locked her up. The puppeteer was quite angry about that. Fairfax Haskell, too, played a part in the killing of Deborah Comenius. He faced up to his wrongs. Now you will face up to yours. At last the die stopped rolling and my number has come up. I'll tell it now. I'll tell it all. When you slandered her, you knew there'd be a witch hunt. Why'd you do it? There was no slander. It was true. She was corrupt. She was evil. And she was a school teacher. Someone had to think of the children. It's horse shit, but he seems to believe it. We're getting closer to the truth. You clapped her in irons and threw her in jail. You took her humanity. You recognized her in the puppeteer, didn't you? I'm sorry, puppeteer? That's what was in the minds, wasn't it? And you knew, didn't you? How long? For how long have you known? What I know and you do not would fill a library. Helen is misguided. 
Under Sebastian's malign influence, she will remain so. Yet Pennington is little better. Which way do you lean? I have faith in Helen Priest. Step down, Captain. Perhaps you may begin to wash your guilt away. Do what you must, and face the consequences. Cast the die. I will. failed, Captain, as an officer, as a man. You brought a curse upon the people of New Eden. No. The fort needs a leader without blood on her hands. I'll do it. I'll place the blame where it belongs. How Marif, how Gunjo. Life to the living. Death to the dead. Seen and done too much as a soldier, a leader, a father. Down with tyranny. Justice prevails. If we are to survive, there is much to do, and survive we shall. For the record, beyond that door, Captain Pennington was tried and executed for his crimes. We did what was needed. The story you tell is up to you. Looks like the Nightmare's curse is lifted here. Job done. So, what now? What did Ceridian say when we first met her? Once we'd weakened the Nightmare's influence, we could use the Void to enter its lair. Deborah's grip on the Settlers has diminished. We'll return to Ceridian's island. From there, the Void Breach will take us back to New Eden Town. Just like that, eh? Well, yes, just like that. Something bothering you. But aren't we rushing things a little? We've lost too much time already. We have a nightmare to confront, remember? Sometimes I hate the world. Another free woman, bright, sensitive, kind, murdered by a craven rabble too weak to face its own mediocrity. Cowards hiding behind fake virtue. And for what? They won't even say her name. Why? Why her? You said it yourself. Deborah was a victim of their fear. That's not enough. Her murder was another throw of a dice. Why is it always us who have to pay with our lives? Aye. You did. And I regret my failure to my dying day and after it too. I was not speaking of our situation. When I left Cuba, anything could have befallen me. I was bright, free, talented. Though I had the wrong tongue, the wrong sex, the wrong skin. I defied life. 
I expected so much more from the world. I was arrogant. Arrogant to believe I needed no one. To shut out my mother and experience Kurandera and listen instead to my sister. Your childhood friend. What happened? I had little and wanted more. A dangerous thing when you have our type of talent. Anything could have befallen me, but it didn't. This has been hard for you. For me too. Perhaps we should think of how far we've come together and take heart. I am dead, Rory. I am dead and sooner will be gone for good. You think I don't know this? So act like it. I'm not the enemy here. Look, all this is a lot to endure. We're both exhausted. I know I am. I cannot tire. I know. I know how hard it's been for you. You have no idea. None at all. I'll do my best to understand, if you'll let me. We should have faith. Look at us. We'll get to where we're going. Shut up, Red. Shut up. This isn't about... This isn't about what we have conquered or what we have achieved or how far we have journeyed. Look at us. Look at me. I loathe what I've become. Can't you see that? I was trying to help. <laughs> I'm sorry. Stop apologizing. Good night. Mantea. Mantea. I would have gone with you. Not funny. I have to walk to the stupid bloody island. Mantea! Please tell me you're here. There you are. Ready to go? I just got here. Can we talk? Why did you leave me alone? You were not alone. Can we go now? How come it's not working? Let's ask Seeker. This all has to end, and I'd rather it was sooner than later. Aye, here's open. Why is there a letter from Deborah Comenius here? And who's Grace? No way back to New Eden Town, and no seeker either. Our only clue points to Kate Newsmith. Maybe she knows this Grace, and where to find her. Banisher, what are you doing here? Good day to you too, Kate. Miss Newsmith to you, murderer. I'm trying to track someone down, and I was hoping you could help me. I'm busy. Find them yourself. I'm not asking you to do anything. 
I just need information. I may have some to share in return. So, I found your name in an old letter. It was addressed to someone by the name of Grace. It was written by Deborah Comenius. You just can't leave a scab unpicked, can you? Especially if it's not your own. Deborah wrote of a cabin in the woods. Could this Grace person have found it? I don't know. It was all a very long time ago. I had forgotten her. Did Grace ask you for help? No. Grace Pennington vanished. No one ever saw her again. Grace Pennington? As in Captain Saul Pennington? What happened to Grace? I don't know that either. There had been strife with her father. Then she was gone. And the captain spoke of her no more. Deborah wrote the letter in February 1688. When did Grace disappear? Months later, Pennington accused Deborah of being a witch. In my recollection, that moment overshadows all others. Could Grace have survived alone out here in the woods? Possibly. But could she remain unseen? No. All thought she'd left New Eden. Gone west, perhaps, into the wilds. Does the name Seeker mean anything to you? It sounds less a name than a calling, but neither mean anything to me. We done. One more question. Did the school teacher keep a cabin in the woods? Deborah spent much time walking the woods, trying to understand New Eden, she said. Now that you mention it, I remember a snowstorm. She spent three days in a hut not far from here. Southeast, across the drawbridge, along the path towards the mine. If it's still there. Do you wish to talk about what happened with the beast? You killed my sister. I have nothing more to say to you. Thickskin did what she did, and you were as horrified as I was. I laid the blame where it belonged. You executed her? Yes, I did. I know it seemed cruel. But I contend that it was necessary. Or seemed so at the time. Sometimes, Banisher. I wonder if we did not exchange one monster for another. I'm sorry to bring this up, but your sister owed me money. So? I did my part. As the new leader of the camp, the debt falls on you. Let me be sure I understand. You killed my sister, and now you're asking me for payment. Well, when you put it like that, never mind, forget it. I'll try. What's new around here? I have no time for gossip. Now that you're in charge, what's the plan? We finish what we started. We find the strength to leave New Eden forever. But not yet. They still have too much fear in their hearts, and not enough hope. The region is still dangerous. They may never find the courage they need to leave it. How fair the people round here? All seem well by Jacob Lind, who was recently returned from the wild. What's wrong with him? I find it hard to credit, and you may disbelieve it too, but Jacob Lind believes he is a wolf. Goodbye to you for now, Kate. <sighs> Just our luck that when we need Seeker the most, she disappears. I still don't understand why the ritual failed. Let's just find the hut. This can't be a coincidence. Could Grace be Seeker? Dusty. Seeker hasn't been here for a long time. Anyone home? Fine wardrobe, a youngster. 
They're rags. And they won't help us find her. Aye. More demonology. Unusual for a witch. These two schools of magic don't usually see eye to eye. Perhaps Lamy could help us with the spell. Quite the fall from grace. That's not funny, and neither is this. Aye, fair enough. But I don't know the symbol. I don't know it, but I think Lamy might. Now we know. She's in the mountains. In the mountains, behind a magic door. And the circle is, somehow, the key. We did well to come here. Now we know where she's hiding. Soon we'll be able to use the pond. All we need is the key to the dissimulation spell. And Lamy Haskell will help us with that. Ah, oh, sure. Things look better here. Helen is working out. Spectral traces. Something's up with Helen. Banishes. Excuse the clatter. I've seen worse. Good day to you, Helen. I did not count on seeing you two again. I take it you've returned for a reason. What can you tell me about a young woman by the name of Grace? It seems you already know some of the story. It was a long time ago, but I'll do my best to fill in the gaps. What happened to her? As I heard it told, one day Grace just wasn't there anymore. How was their relationship? I believe it was... stormy as you'd expect between a commander and his disobedient daughter. I do think he loved her, but as far as anyone ever saw, he never shed a single tear for her. Later, after he exiled her, did the captain try to find his daughter? Not to my knowledge. He did not set off in search of her, nor did he send men. At the time, I thought it strange. Still do. I'll never understand how a man could reject his only daughter. And that, my inquisitive banisher friends, is all I know about the matter. Go gentle, Helen. Failing that, go hard. Grace was right in front of us all along. I barely recognize her. Let's find her. Lamy should be able to help us with the ritual. No governor, nor meeting house. And it seems, no faith. As a queen. Well, ho there. What a pleasant surprise. I was fair and sure that I'd never see you again. Very often. Mm. Far away, God willing. Built bridges, say the wise, that people may better understand each other. Build a jetty, say I, so that a ship may come and we can leave. New Eden is a fascinating study for you and I. But for ordinary folk, it is, as I've heard it put, a shite hole. Leaving sounds right to me, if these people learn from their mistakes. They repent, Mistress Duarte. A new start elsewhere, away from the place in which they sinned, will do them good. Spoken like a leader. I fear, however, that not everyone shall listen. I fear what shall befall them if they stay behind. 
We found a page ripped from a book. Here, do you recognise it? Let me see. Is this from the Trismegistus riddles? <laughs> yes, it seems to be. Why would you bring me one mildewed page from an amusing but harmless little book? Why would you fail to disclose that you'd given another ritual to another friend? It was a long time ago. I said after Caleb I'd distribute no more rituals, and that's what I've done. Uh, not done. We know, but we're looking for Grace Pennington now, and we were hoping you'd help us find her. Who? Really, boy? Oh, I'm sorry, Mistress Antea. You said Grace's name, and it is my reflex to protect her. Ever heard of someone named Seeker? Seeker? No. Sounds like a title, like my true pursuer. This Seeker... Is she... Grace? Is she alive? Do you know where she is? We think she's Grace. We hope she's still alive. We're trying to find out. We think she's hidden herself away behind your dissimulation spell. Then you'll need to unravel it. Shouldn't be too difficult once you're armed with the salient facts. When was the last time you saw Grace Pennington? It had to be a few days after I brought her the cloaking ritual. When I returned to visit, the hut had disappeared. Which makes sense now that I think of it. That's it? You never again tried to find your best friend. Your only friend. Well, you see, some weeks later the first whispers of witchcraft started to fly about town. I kept my head down and Grace was better off out of it. I was right. And I'm glad she escaped. Strange to think of her again after so long. How does the ritual work? It creates illusions so effective that they deceive even the keenest eye. There are more effective cloaking spells, but the Trismegistus riddles do have a simple elegance. The short version, please, ending with how we break it. Yes, yes, of course. To achieve that, all you need is the caster's full name and the symbol used to make fast the illusion. Grace Pennington and a triangle pointing downwards. Well then, now all you need is a simple counterspell from the same book and... Oh my... What now? I'm afraid I left my copy in the Araloo. In the void. That's just great. Just great. Yes, but in my defence, once you've retrieved the book, dispelling Grace's illusion will be like a walk in the park. Comparatively speaking. Thank you for your help. Could you tell Grace that I'm still her friend? I'd be glad to see her again. Once we found her, we'll be glad to tell her. Come on then. Talk to me. I'm old back. I haunt you as a ghost, and you act as though that's normal. I'm dead, and I'm not all right. I'm not all right at all, but you pretend not to see it. That makes me angry, and it makes me sad. I never wanted that. I know, but it still felt that way. Look, 
I couldn't talk about it. Couldn't talk about what? You accused me of pretending not to see that you're dead. That's how I feel, Red. You have to accept it. I just... I couldn't face your death. I admit that. I rely on you. Your presence reassures me. I dread your absence. I can barely bring myself to think about it. I don't wish to deny your pain. No. No. I've just tried to deal with mine. Wow. That's... <sighs> I hadn't thought of it that way. Thank you for your honesty. Well, this looks like Lamy's stuff. Only more scattered. Even with the void shifting, the book should be around here somewhere. Got it. That seemed a little too easy. We have the symbol we need. Let's go back to the mountain and find her hiding place. This is it. Seeker is behind this wall. Let the, Let the veil, veil of unknowing, of unknowing be, lifted. be lifted. Let, Let us, us see through, through the, the eyes of Grace Pennington. Ceridian? You're surprisingly slow, even for a banisher. You're late. Or early. At last we find you. Missed me that much, did you? You could have hurried. You always think you have more time, and suddenly you don't. It wasn't in vain. We have come far and learned much. I hope so. But don't think you have it all figured out. You still banish us, after all. We are indeed, Grace. So, you know. When I asked if you'd known Deborah Comenius, you denied it. Why? Seeker never met Deborah. Grace did. I am no longer Grace, and I don't like to speak for her. Deborah was Grace's teacher. She encouraged her to be herself become who I am now. They did not know one another, but without Deborah, I'd have never met Ceridian. And with Ceridian, my entire life changed. Deborah suffered terribly, and the fate she met was exactly the fate I fled. I accept it now. I accept it all. Ceridian has left a hollow, and I am called to fill it. I accept. I am ready for my role in this world. Are you ready for yours? The time has come for us to go back to New Eden and face the nightmare. Yes. Balance must be restored. You must face your fate and end the curse. Ceridian said the only way back was through the void. But the pond seems broken. We need your help. Of course you do. We're listening. Remember Ceridian's words. If you were to defeat the Nightmare, your hearts must be open to each other. No barriers. Your bond must be strong. We've never been stronger. This Void Breach is not like the others. This one... leaks. This one sits at the rotten core of the entire region. You must leave whatever still burns in your hearts at the threshold. If you don't, the Void will kill you. Do you know where in New Eden Town the Void shall lead us? The trick is to focus on your happiest memories and let them take you there. At least that's how it's always worked for me. We'll try. And when at last you succeed, I too shall return to New Eden Town. I shall see you there.
We looked for you everywhere. Why did you leave the Maya marshes? I needed time. Silence. My own space. Hidden away behind Lamy Haskell's dissimulation spell. Oh. You know about that. It held a full seven years. Isn't that impressive? This is the place where I embrace solitude. This is where I made it a strength. As a child, I hated being alone. It left me vulnerable to a deceptive creature. To have the gift with neither mastery nor guidance can be very dangerous. By the time I was able to banish my supposed friend, I had come within a whisper of losing my entire family. To vanquish such an insidious spirit alone, you were either very lucky or immensely talented. In the void, I felt... I felt as if it were there. I felt it call to me. Perhaps it was. But chase the fear from your heart. For you are stronger now, Antea Duarte. And you are no longer alone. You learned magic by yourself. Not really. Not at all. First, Lammy Haskell's forbidden books told me that magic was real. They say you must look out for the quiet kids. And that was me and Lammy. Reading those books opened my eyes to worlds of wonder. But I did not learn witchcraft until Ceridian found me. Lammy showed me the view from the prison window, but my mistress walked me right out the door. Lamy was relieved to hear you well. He talked about paying you a visit. When I was exiled, he was the only one who'd help. Sweet boy. But now is not the time for visitors. Later, perhaps. Later, when you have lifted the curse. The boy will be disappointed. He has a thing for witchery. That will take. Bring peace to this troubled land and your troubled hearts, my friends. I know it's not easy to hear, especially when it's me saying it. On the contrary. Thank you, Seeker. We'll do our best. Welcome back. Goodbye. We'll meet again in New Eden Town. She's the custodian now. May she have all the wisdom of her mentor, and more. I wish I had half the wisdom of mine. You're not as stupid as you sound. You'll be fine. Ready to walk through it if you are. Wait. This is it, isn't it? This is it. You always think you have more time, and suddenly, you don't. Do you ever wonder how things would have gone if we'd never come here? Never? Do you? Sometimes. I think about our last morning in Oporto, of our tiny room overlooking the fish market. A horrendously loud fish market. You slept soundly in my arms as I lay listening to the clamor. I watched those curtains blow through the window for hours. Or so it felt. I think of that moment often. That instant suspended in time. Before Charles's letter found us. We were glad to hear from our friend. And buoyed by a later success. The ghost blew up the Duke's wine cellar. But we got the job done. <laughs> I had a good life. We had a good life. I'm gonna miss you so very much. 
There's much to do between here and goodbye. Let's go do it. Thank you for standing by my side through it all, for everything. Into the fray then. Always. What is it? Baggage I may need to finally face. Let's press on. You chose the schoolhouse too. Of course. Our last night together. I knew it. And now the question is, how do we reach it? I like your doll. What are you doing? This is Aleja. She is a witch, and she is running away from the Spanish soldiers. She had a horse, but he died. He was an old friend. Maybe we can build her a raft. I'm Anthea. What's your name? To hell with that. Patience, Antea. You know that we have to be twice as good as them to get half of what they have. Ugh. I can't stand anymore. I love doing that. <laughs> I think your mother is jealous of you. I'm better than she was at my age. Of course she is. We could train in secret. These are memories from my childhood. But why here? Think you could take on a ghost? form and reform. Your passageway's already gone. This place has a plan for us, and I suspect we may not like it. Well, it's just us here, and they are... Damn it! The void centers in on us. Perhaps you've been thinking about your past and memories are manifesting. Or the other way around. banished her without knowing how. Back then I did... Free yourself, Andrea. Let the fire melt your shackles. Careful, Red. It's close. Bastard. Stay, Andrea. Stay and play with me. I feel like being led by the nose. It's playing with us. Wants us to feel powerless. <laughs> I'll feast on your soul. You won once. Never again. Never again. 
You kind of go round the fire. You must go through. All you can be all alone. No one to play with. No one to talk to. Poor little Althea. Gifted and talented. Constricted. Bound. Abandoned. Go to hell. Look at you dead, clinging to some pitiful soul in a hopeless search for meaning. Thank you, Rory McVeigh, for bringing her to me. This thing was never human, Red. Don't indulge it. You'll soon be mine. Your voice, your soul, everything. Damn you. You want to play, Calendre? Fine. Let's play. At last you visit Calendre, your bestest friend. We are not friends, and your name is not Calendre. <laughs> Perhaps I should name myself by what called me to you. Your weariness? Your solitude? <laughs> your arrogance? For years, I would not shoulder the weight of what I did. I would not face my regrets. I would not wear my guilt. My home burned to the ground. My face was marked forever. When I look in the mirror, I think of you. I fled the family I'd nearly killed. I buried my true feelings in hate for you. No more. I loved you once. You were my sister. You are my soul. I don't care what you really are. To me, you are manipulation and lies and nothing else. If the void birthed you, then I pity you. I forgive Calendre for being nothing but a mirror. And I forgive myself for not knowing better. And you, Rory McGrath? Can you forgive her? For leaving you alone and unloved and haunted only by her memory. The souls we banish end up in the void. I know this now. I pity them. I pity you. Your pity means nothing to me, mortal. You are nothing. How convenient, then, that I don't need you to give myself closure. Mantea, Mantea. Such a clever girl. So good with words of power. Is that how you seduced your little pet here? And I am the relentless servant of the Queen of Kerr. The hell? Come, stay a while, stay forever. I see you right through. Blast 
infested pest. I will reap your soul. Running away, are we? We must focus on the sorrow, then we can end this. told you the full story. I'm sorry. No need. Please, let's get out of here. Onwards, let's get this over with. Is the entire town lost to Ivy? Her influence must still be strong. We really had no idea what we were walking into. If I had taken the threat seriously, then you might be alive. All that matters now is that you give me my ascent. <laughs> Would you a lecture on the sanctity of marriage? A pretty word for a set of shackles. I'm sure folk here are just as open minded as Charles. We were so in love. We are in love. With no condition. To the very end. Aye. Get lost, won't you? After this, we should set sail somewhere warm and safe. The dead don't linger. No such place. But it's not a bad idea. What shall I say to you? When I give you a sin? I don't know. All ghosts linger for a reason. This is an odd kind of homecoming. It is strange to be back. It is strange. To sleep near the place where you died. Still, rest you should. You'll need it. I don't know that I can. Come on, spit it out. What will I say to you when you go? When I give you a scent? When the moment comes, you'll know what to say. I'll be the banisher, bringing an ending to his own haunting case. How does that work? The same as any other. You'll undo the tie. Don't worry. I won't resist. 
But why did you stay? What is the tie that we're undoing? I told you to be careful. That night, in this room, I told you to be careful. I worried you'd act rashly and told you not to. You got up and walked straight into her trap. I thought you'd gone to the meeting house without me. I died to save you. You stay out of anger. Yes, I stayed because I was angry. Angry with you. I think I've known that for a while now. The anger lingers. Part of me resents you yet. For my pain and my fear. For my suffering. For my dying. I resent you. Thea. I am truly sorry. I know you are. You've done your best to put things right. But I did die. And in a few short hours, you will have to let me go. It is time. What if we... What if I fail once more? One wrong choice will exact a heavy price. Whatever happens, we will face it. Till death do us part. Sharpshooter. Use the practice. No Eden suffers. We suffer. My friends, I have disturbing news. Among us walks the witch. Is that not so, Deborah Comenius? Lock her up. No, no, tis not true. I am no witch. So that's how it all began. Aye, with ordinary evil from the hearts of fearful men. Deborah Comenius, this court finds you guilty of the devil's work. Guided by God's mercy, I pass sentence on the witch. Pain forted you. Confess and name your accomplices, or die for your sins. I have nothing to confess. How could they let this happen? Not a soul stood or spoke for her. There's no justice here. It's a travesty. Confess, witch. None Trust stand me, for you. Don't you don't want a garden. Your coven has betrayed you. Name them, and you shall live. I am no witch. You know this. All of you. Do not turn away from me. You must release me. You must. Will no one speak for me? Anyone? Please, help me. Help me! I feel her distress. Her rising terror. Her dark despair. She's suffered enough. And so have we. So, the circle is complete. Do you return to the beginning? Or is it the beginning of your return? Paradox. How clever. How it pleases you to play with time. I do not play. Deborah, we know what happened to you. We know what they did to you. 
What they did. What they do. I shatter yet. We're not here to hurt you. You have my body and I want it back. That's all. Help us. Because we can help you. No, you cannot. myself. Make them pay. No. They do not deserve our rage, not these two. All deserve our wrath. They crushed the breath from us. You know this. You asked for this. It's over. You have been heard. The truth is out. No! Come back! Feed upon the pain, the treachery, the outrage! No more. It hurts. Behold my wrath! Long into a cage! Seek a monster. Don't give it to them. They turned their back on us. Yes, they did. What was it all for? It must.
Moment! Enough pain now. There must be a reckoning. The pain may end right now. The reckoning is here. Spare me your compassion, for it comes far too late. Who are you? I am retribution. A word. An idea. But who are you? I am her fury. No longer. I am their nightmare! You were. You believe you've won? It will not be so easy. For I will end your dreams. Is that an end to it? Yes. If you want it to be. Are you sure? In your hand you weigh my death, the last stone laid upon my broken body. I'm so very sorry. Will you leave? Are you ready? I have lingered so very long. Where now will I go? I don't know. A better place, I believe. A quiet place. Quiet is good. Deborah Comenius, mere words can ill describe your suffering. And if they could, let not utter them now. Enough wrong has been done you. Your tale is told, and we thank you for it. You are hurt, and free to go. Hey, I'm right here. Aye, you are.
This is unfair. Yet here we are. What am I going to do? I said I had died, not you. Either way, we must part. I love you so. <laughs> You were the love of my life. Stay. Just a little longer. You promised you'd let me go. Maybe we could just... No! Stay. Please. Don't do this. I can't stay. You know I can't. My one and only love. Thank you. Farewell. I wish I could tell you that time heals all, but that would be a lie. There are already too many lies to this tale. New Eden never recovered. Neither did Ruri Macraith. Guilt does not always lessen with time. Some wounds never close. Some scars remain tender, but who knows? Perhaps someday, a grey-haired Scot may sail to Cuba and tell the Duarte family of their daughter's death and of her greatness. Perhaps he may even admit that he misses her and will miss her his whole life long. <laughs>